Good evening and welcome to the Queen Anne's County Board of Education uh, work session on Wednesday, February 12th, 2020. I'd like to call this meeting to order. At the top of our agenda, we have a transportation report, a new bus purchase, Mr. Pinder. Yes, President Harper, board members. Um, Mr. Raymond Aaron um, had turned in a request to replace bus 0309, which will be 12 years old. Um, we have the um, addendum where they can replace them between 12 to 15 years of service. If they've <clears throat> gone through and have paid $5,000 in repair fees per year, which Mr. Raymond uh, Aaron has, then they qualify to purchase a new bus within that time period. Um, bus 0309, and he's looking to replace that in the next physical year. Um, and that will be with a new PVA, which um, probably based upon the bus being 12 years old, would probably be about a $2,500 increase. Um, in the budget that we're proposing yes, for yeah. next year. And we allocate in the budget about six to seven new buses a year. So that will cover that in there for the PVA. Any other questions for Mr. Pender? Just that he, just to clarify, he's got 12 years. We can take him to 15, but his it, breaks down too much. Yes. In, one it, of those Sellersville. Yeah, Northern. He's from Central. If you look at the the, um, the regulations and all that were wrote, it states in there that <clears throat> anything with engine failure or um, cost up to five above five thousand dollars, then he can um, or he or she can apply for a new one. What I found interesting, I just learned the other day watching the buses go by, when you say something, something 09, mm -hmm. that was put in service 09. That's correct. So the last two digits yep. are yes. the year it was put in service. So it's kind of, I watch them ride by and I'll see 15, 9, 12, or whatever. And I thought a pretty good way to do that. that yes, we uh, did that a few years ago and that's helped out tremendously because when you ride down the road, if I'm going to Baltimore somewhere, you see buses and I have no, I couldn't tell you, you know, what the year was on it, but right. this helps out quite yeah, a bit. Yeah, that's a good, good, good way to go. Yep. And make a motion. He never run out of numbers. No. Well, we've gone into the 10109 and you know the 101 you know 20 now. So. I have a motion to uh, accept the new bus bus purchase for Raymond Aaron bus 309, whichever it will be then. I have a motion. Motion. Second. I have a motion. Second. Any questions or comments on the motion? Hearing none, I call for the vote on the motion to approve the new bus purchase for Raymond Aaron, bus 2309. All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. All opposed say no. The ayes have it. The motion is carried. Thank you, Mr. Pender. Appreciate it. Thank you. We now have on our uh, budget work session the FY21 capital budget request. Mr. Pender? Yes, ma'am. If, oh, thank you, um, Ms. Wright. What I wanted to do is go through, before we get into all of the um, requests that we have. I kind of wanted to show you what we've done basically the past um, two years and what the county commissioners have funded us and how, you know, we take all the requests and then we kind of try to narrow them down. Um, I will say um, when it comes to the capital part that the county commissioners, I feel, have been very generous to us um, in helping us out with that part. Um, and one of the items that we'll get into here in a minute um, Thank you. Um, but yeah, if you can get to the next one, yeah. The next one. Thank you. Um, I'm going to break this down into several different areas. Um, part of it. When I say capital state fund uh, funding match, that is basically where we're going through um, the state and the county to do the 51-49 split for capital items um, that go in front of the, uh, the Board of Public Works and the IAC for their approval. Um, in FY19, we uh, received $902,000 for the Churchill Chiller replacement and the Ken Island High School Chiller replacement. And if you could go to the next slide. Thank you. Um, about four years ago, we were kind of struggling to keep our um, 
capital budget and also facility needs in place. And we went through and did a comprehensive building assessment that many, many of you are aware of. Um, and it really laid out, thank you, sir. It really laid out um, the steps for the next 15 to 20 years. One of the items the county commissioners were asking us for is, hey, can you come to us with a consistent number um, for capital projects for your facilities as far as repairs go? Um, I would say probably within the 1.5 million to 2 million range is what we need in capital each year. You're gonna see in a lot of the slides today, um, a lot of our equipment in the buildings is 22 to 25, some of it's even 40 years old. Um, some items when we did when they did Queen Anne's County High School um, and re renovated it never got upgraded some of that's still the same equipment there hey we've gotten 40 44 years out of it that, that's pretty good so our construction as far as moving forward um, with new buildings is kind of slowed down you know we have maybe Centerville Middle School on the horizon and maybe a new Board of Ed but as far as the building of new schools that's kind of come to an end now it's time to take care of them for 30, 40 years. And that's what the comprehensive uh, building assessment really gave us that information. I've tried to break it down into each category. Um, sometimes when things go from our department to the, the finance department at the county, they get labeled a little bit differently. But when you're looking at the allocations for the comprehensive building assessment, you'll be looking at basically the same bullets up there. Um, so in the FY19 budget, they gave us 1.8, almost one, pretty much $1.9 million. Um, and we broke that into ADA um, needs, building shell. Um, for some reason, it's labeled comprehensive building assessment when that should be the whole thing. Um, interior repairs, site work, and substructure repairs. But so what is that? That's what I was going to ask. Comprehensive building assessment. That, that is how, I was trying to keep it apples to apples. That's how the county coded it, listed it. But truly, uh, Captain Kelly, when you look at that 1.9 up there almost, that is all comprehensive. Right, uh, building but the assessment. million is, what is that? Miscellaneous, so, what would you call it? No, um, I would call that um, when you start painting buildings. Okay, so um, when you start doing, yeah, it. inside. We have schools that haven't been painted in 20, 25 years. Um, are you so, saying that's basically maintenance? Yes, ma'am. Good maintenance. Yep. So. so this is the money that we really count on to maintain the buildings, um, along with our operating fund. Um, you know, we can have it either way, you know, as long as we can get the money to help pay for that. Um, moving on, I call this the other categories. I mean, there's really no explanation or a really good title for it, but basically, um, in FY19, uh, we asked for $70,000 in classroom technology replacement. Um, we have LCD projectors that are 10 years old. It's about the lifespan of it. You know, you may get the bulbs two to five years of age. Uh, they need to be replaced. Um, really, the budget that was set up for the materials of instruction is not supporting that. Um, so we asked for that. The county commissioners gave us that. Um, we had $85,000 in custodial equipment replacement. Um, yeah, you know, as you imagine, there's 1.4 million square feet that we're cleaning um, every day. So that is used quite frequently. Um, we had $155,000 in fleet vehicles. When I say fleet vehicles, I'm talking about maintenance, um, custodian vehicles. Some of them were uh, from 1991, 1992. So we got our value out of those. Um, security upgrades. Uh, transportation, what we try to do, and you'll see this in the next couple slides, we had about eight buses um, that needed to be replaced. So instead of asking the county commissioners um, in one year to replace eight buses at probably close to $900,000, we try to break it out in several years for those replacement. Um, all of those buses are special needs buses that met the 15 year requirement. And then we sell them on public surplus and take that money, you know, that we can generate and put it back into the uh, the fund. Um, <clears throat> you have uh, 1.3 million dollars in technology, the laptops initiative, 500 thousand dollars in textbooks, and then 20 thousand dollars in band uniforms. I believe that was for Queen Anne's County High School. So, Mr. Pender, yes, so the 2.7 and the 1.8 were all funded. Uh -huh. In FY 19. Uh, yes, ma'am. And you'll see that in just a second. Okay. So looking oh, up there okay. in the FY19, 
we had basically $5.5 million in those categories that uh, we uh, asked for and uh, were funded by the county commissioners. FY19 uh, projects that we completed, you were asking about that $1 million um, line item, uh, Captain Kelly. So basically, um, we ripped out the carpet in Bayside Elementary and put VCT in the hallways, um, chiller replacement, paint the interior school of Graysonville, the canopies at both high schools were sandblasted, um, the main canopies. Um, Walk-in refrigerator freezer at Queen Anne's High School, which was the original one, was replaced. Um, something that we have not done, and I can't tell you how many years, we actually got to uh, mill and pave a school parking lot, which we are trying to do in a cycle, and that's what our facility assessment helped us out with, trying to do two schools a year to paint, and two schools a year for um, milling and paving the parking lots. Um, parking lots have, have never been really touched except for, you know, potholes. They've never been sealed. Um, we just never received that kind of funding. So those are the projects that we were able to complete um, with about the 5.5 million. Can you just clarify? Yes, ma'am. That 5.5 is county supplied. You have state supplied on top yes. of that. Yes, state supply. So it's a 50-49 split for the uh, from the IAC, and that was for the chiller uh, replacement at Churchill and also Kenan High School. So the, that 5.5 million that you just saw is strictly county funded. That doesn't include the state portion. I just, this is only county. Members. This is all county, is what I'm showing you. So I just wanted to keep that all separated. Um, so for FY20, the current year we're in, um, we had about $788,000. Uh, the BES partial re uh, roof replacement, the fire alarm at Churchill Elementary, and partial roof replacement at Ken Island Elementary School. Keep in mind, once we get that funding allocated um, on July 1st, most of the work is not going to occur until that following summer. So these projects you see here, these projects will be occurring this summer because by the time you get all the contracts in place and you get everything done, school's back in session. Sometimes we can do the schoolwork in the evenings, um, depending on the cost of it, because obviously you're gonna pay more when you're working in the evenings, nighttime. Um, and sometimes with the roof projects, we really just don't want anyone in the building when it's occurring. Um, so some of these will be done this summer. It's basically a, a year behind. We did have two feasibility studies that the county commissioners funded, uh, $200,000 for central office, $300,000 for the middle school, uh, for a total of 500,000. Ask a question there. Yes, sir. The central office, I thought it came, we did it at 90. We did, but that's what was given to us. Um, we, spent, we picked up, or they, they gave us 200. They gave us 200,000. We were able to bring it in at 90,000. But then the middle school was 500, wasn't it? Or am I no, not? It was, it was 500 total, 500,000 for both projects. So the, so the middle school was maybe 400. No, it was it was below that. I'll have to take Carl. I, I just remember the numbers that I saw. That was a couple of a month back, but yeah, it it falls within that. The numbers you see up here are the numbers that is what they the county gave us, um, and we base that off of you know the market and what it's going at the current time. Sometimes you come in really low like that, and other times it's a little bit higher. But um, and when when we write that feasibility up, are you hands on on that as far as what what you know what we're asking? Yes, so yes. A lot of times what these things come back as is a lot of times what you ask them. No, we've, Keep on with that feasibility study so far, it's gone through the first phase. Uh -huh. And they're bringing back the information now. Carla sits down and she calls me in and we kind of go through it and say, hey, okay, this is a you know, decent project here. You know, can we do without this? Can we do without that? And then we bring in all the, you know, the groups. Basically, the first go around is your wish list. Right. And then once you look at the numbers proposed to that, you start narrowing it down to what. We just won't give them a, a blank canvas. No, no, paint no. It's, it's pretty detailed. Okay. The first, the first go around, sir, yes, it's kind of that open canvas and you just, but then it, you have to bring it and in to meet the budget. Yeah. So, I mean, you know, you're looking 11 to $13 million in that ballpark for a you know, new board building. Um, Capital allocations for the, the comprehensive building assessment. These are the same uh, items I talked about uh, in the previous slide. 
it was uh, we only got funded nine hundred twenty eight thousand dollars which was a little bit lower but we were still able to do quite a bit of work um, with the with that kind of money there um, again you're looking at the uh, classroom technology seventy thousand so basically all of those items with the technology laptops the textbooks at five hundred thousand um, the four hundred thirteen thousand we were able to get about $3.1 million um, in capital funding from the commissioners. So all of that breaks down to about $5.3, $5.4 million once you include that. So based off the FY19, FY20, you know, we're looking at $5.5, $5.8 million in capital funding for that. All right. But we say capital. Is there a, a, a year, like a life expectancy on most of the, I know it varies. Buses are 12 to 15. Computers, I don't know what they so, are. So, I mean, is it average 20 years? It's supposed to be a one-time cost, all right, when you use the capital. Uh, I mean, but it's, Some I mean, of it is not one-time cost. I guess what I'm looking at is if they're bonding this for, let's say, 20 years, which when I was there, that's what they used to do. It's, it's something, if they're bonding something for a 10-year, it kind of scares me. And then bond it for 20. But if you're bond, if it's average in 20, then it gives them, you know, at least you put a flag up and say, listen, this might not. This is a 10-year life expectancy, not 20-year life expectancy. I'd Can say, we with that at all? yeah, I'd say for, I don't want to get into like the technology part of it, but I would say uh, that's not really my realm, but uh, or the t textbooks. I mean, not to throw you uh, in there, but I would say we're getting that out of um, okay. what we're doing to the buildings. Mm -hmm. um, you know, with roofing projects, um, you know, hey, like I said, it's been 25 years since some schools are painted. Right. So we can get that return on the investment of what you're talking about, yes. But that's what, and the roof's probably more expensive than a bus, but then it averages a close. I mean, you're not, it's not a three to five year thing. It's a no, yes. 15 to 20, you know, average. Because, I mean, that's I, the, I'd say you're probably looking at 15 to 20 years. Okay. Um, you know, like I said, we you'll see tonight. I know it's a one-time cost, yeah. but these the beer are also long-term. I mean, nothing's oh, yeah. forever. No, nothing's forever. And, and you'll see some kitchen equipment in here that's 30 years old. Mm -hmm. I mean, we've been able to get that out of it. It's just met its life expectancy plus a few years. Um, so these were items that we we didn't get funded last year. Uh, so FY20 unfunded items. Um, when you look at the proposal for the night. Um, you know, you'll see Bayside Elementary School, um, you know, we were trying to get that painted along with Churchill this year. Again, we were trying to do two schools in a year. So you'll see, you know, that was cut out, the uh, Kennel and Asphalt. Um, one of the items that we're really coming across here um, is aging PA intercom systems. And if you've tried to call the board office here, um, we're, we're, we're having, uh, you know issues here too. Um, we're buying Tried five times a day. We're buying parts off of eBay. I probably had to text people in the building to say, uh, "Hey, oh yeah, put the switch." Um, and uh, that is something that we really got to get into um, replacing every so many years. Um, so the resurfacing the track though, did that get done when no, they did? It no, did not. No. When when they did this when they did the. Uh, no. the and you'll see that in the budget for this year coming up. Okay, because it's right. bad. Yep, it is. But and I thought that was part of the grant that installed those turf fields. Uh, yeah. They, they didn't have enough money when they got done to do that. Sound the money in. Uh, Both of those Because they told supported. us that they were going to redo it. That was the original plan, yes. And then once they got into it and numbers weren't there, as, I mean, the money, you know, there wasn't enough money allocated for that. Um, we did get cost proposals for, you know, the tracks. Um, Ken Island's high school track is 22 years old you're looking at uh, uh probably the average life ex expectancy is about 15 on a track um so that is one of the items when we look at the athletic account tonight um that's one item that we uh you know is at the top of the list for that section um i'm going to talk tonight also about uh replaced bus cameras um ours are over 15 years old we've applied for grants and some other funding sources that I believe we're going to uh, be able to receive. Um, custodial equipment, you know, $120,000 wasn't funded. Um, we were able to do a, a transfer the other day uh, to fund some of that equipment um, from FY19, uh, I believe it was, 18. Um, here's some projects that we were able to um, 
complete or be completed. Again, remember I said a lot of them are about a year behind. Um, Bayside Elementary Mill and Pave the Parking Lot. Churchill, again, will do this summer. Churchill will be painted. Um, gutters, lighting, flooring, windows. Um, we have a project lined up for the auditorium lighting in the Queen Anne's County High School. Um, it is in uh, much need of updating there. What floors and light and windows in Mattapique Elementary School? That school was put in, we went in at school in 2003. Um, 17 years, you should get a little bit more of that. The fl uh, flooring and windows. Um, the flooring is the VCT, um, the expansion gaps um, there need to be replaced. Um, the windows, I have to talk to Carla about that one and Jim. That one, for some reason, I'm not ringing the bell. Um, I'll have to ask them about that one. Because I don't remember that being on any of the lists. Yeah, I don't, and I may have put down the wrong school on that, but I can go okay. back and look at that. that we've, had, we've had trouble with floors in Mattapique Elementary since right. opened, so. Well, we've replaced we pretty much all oh, the yeah. windows there. Yeah. Um, okay. One more question. Yes, ma'am. I noticed on the 19 allocation, we did we had 85,000 for custodian equipment, and now in, in 20, we got another 120,000. We didn't receive 120,000. We didn't, okay, that's why you're at. So it's and what, that. what we're trying to do, and you'll see this later on with the custodian equipment, in the summertime, we're trying to get away from a stripper and the chemicals and all that of cleaning the floors. Now they have an orbital um, scrubber that is not using any kind of chemicals. It's a lot healthier for us. It's a lot easier and faster to clean the buildings. So we're trying to do that. Um, we did write some grants through MABE uh, where we were able to get, I think, $40,000 to help purchase some of that equipment. Um, so we try to get whatever grants we can out of there. but. That wasn't funded for last year. The auditorium lighting is at the stage. That's the entire auditorium. Oh, okay. Yeah. So all your recessed lights, the can lights, and all that. Mm -hmm. um, and you'll see tonight where we're also asking for approval and the capital budget to upgrade the uh, lighting board. Uh, where the fire was last year. In the in the booth. Yes. Okay. Yep. It is dark in that auditorium. Whenever I go, it just seems always. Well, they had that fire last year. Because I mean, when they fell or well, yeah, aged or somebody had a piece of wood, they, they actually had a light sitting on top of a piece of wood that yeah. they should have mm -hmm. not had there. So it really wasn't mechanical as far as the structure. It was okay. somebody placed it there in the wrong spot and never went back. Um, so for FY21 capital request, um, you know, if you've been to Bayside Elementary School and looked at the exterior window um, and doors on those fronts, they really need to be replaced. Um, uh, Sellers Elementary School chiller replacement at 184,000. Um, we have replaced the same age category, uh, Graysonville Elementary School's chiller um, and Churchill Elementary School chiller. These are the same age category. Um, the fire alarm and then the roof replacement. Um, at Ken Island. At Ken Island High School. That, that, now, that thing's 20 years old now. Oh yeah. So 2022, 20, and then so you- So are we getting 20, at least 20 years out of our roofs? For the most part, yeah. Okay. I, I will say for this metal, for this roof replacement, we are not going back with shingles. Okay. Um, you know, to get 22 years out of our roof with shingles is pretty good. And you got the wind and stuff. We're too. going with a metal seam okay. um, roof. Now, that number up there, that 2.4, that could change based upon what the uh, state gives us. I will say, the um, the Bayside project, the two Sellersville Elementary School projects, the state will match. We're still waiting to hear back about are they only going to give us half the funding um, for the Ken Island roof replacement, which will work out fine because I'm going to be honest with you, it's going to be a two-year project. Um, you know, that's huge. A, a huge roof. Um, and one of the areas we work on the most is trying to enclose the building you know because that's where you're going to get all of your issues um, so without a good outer shell you're really behind the eight ball so that that number there could slide down a million um, but again we don't have that information some of the things you're going to see tonight they could totally change you know within the next two or three you know months 
um, once we get final word on some of these. But these are the total costs. Exactly. Yes, ma'am. State of okay. this. This is the total cost to the county. All right. So to the state and county. No, just to just to the county. Oh, so this is a half price. That's half price, basically. Yes. So fifty one forty nine. But basically, yes, you're going to get another. You mean three we're million. Gonna, we're going to spend two and a half million dollars on a roof and five million total. Mm-hmm. Same school only costs nineteen or twenty. Yeah, but you got to look back at twenty five years ago. I mean, the cost rate now for um, construction on a, uh, a school or a heavy commercial building is about four hundred dollars per square foot. For the roof? No, 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 no. I'm talking for about the construction. Total construction. Right. But for the roof, no. That's that's cheaper. It's not in the four hundred. But I'm saying it, the cost of uh, labor is going up. Um, I was just reading something the other day where University of Maryland is doing a project, and I can't. Uh, do you remember how many? I, I don't know if I shared it with you, but I can't tell you how many millions it went up because the lack of workforce that's skilled in those areas is driving it up. Um, it was amazing, but. Uh, that's that may come under that you know once we get the numbers in there but um, having um, the figures worked on it that's about where it's going to come out of and do we have problems getting something this big done in this county or do we have to bring people out I mean nobody this in the county can do some of this project no so you're going to get most of the ones sure. like Centerville Middle School um, most they're either coming from Salisbury uh, Washington or Baltimore um, and the key thing here is with the roof Getting somebody that's reputable. I mean, getting somebody that's going to come back if something, you know, is is, is not working right. You know, having somebody that's a fly-by-night company come. For over. almost five million dollars, yeah. Oh, yeah, that's what I'm saying. You want to make sure you're getting what you're paying for. Yeah. But again, we're kind of past that new construction. It's all about maintaining the buildings for you know 40 years, 30, 40 more years. Um, this next one floors me. Just a general question. How many square feet do we manage? Do we have 1.4 million? 1.4 million. Square yep. feet. Now that includes um, every all the buildings, yeah. portables, warehouse, field houses, all of that. Yeah. Planning and design. The last building that committee I was on was only about a million dollars for a school. Now you're telling me it's two million dollars? That's estimated, and that. When I when I, I show you this tonight, the, this we're not ten, building another building this size, right? No, it right now you're looking at anywhere between twenty and forty thousand square feet. All right, and based upon what the prices are going to be coming back in, okay. you'll narrow it down. Two million dollars is a holding spot. I mean, I don't know. You know, the county commissioners seem like they were in favor of, of doing this. I mean, they may come back and say, hey, I, you know, we don't have that kind of money. Right. But I didn't. I did not want to in, not include it in the, in the budget. But they've asked us they have to asked push this. I'm not pushed to put this project on the front burner. Yes. Oh. And I, like I said, I, I didn't want to leave it out and then somebody go, hey, you never yeah, no, included that in it there. Is, is that architect's design in there too? Yes. So that, but that is. usually five or six percent, aren't they? Yes. So that right there um, is all county funding. The state doesn't participate in any of that. So again, that's just the holding place. Are we going to go for the Begathon then to try and get money to build? Mm -hmm. I mean, no. They, we always go to the Begathon in January. That's they, what we used to do. No, right? they've we don't have to do it anymore. They've, they've that's changed that out. Anyhow, totally. so will the state match funds to build the building? For the board, probably not. Okay, that's what I thought. I mean, even if you were to include in one of the options is Rise Academy. Academy, the amount of funds that you will get for the uh, students to attend is pretty minimal. Right. And I'll say this, the strings that are attached to doing it, yeah. um, instead of building it in one year, it's gonna take us a process, probably two more years to go through. And that's, when you look at Centerville Middle School planning, it, it's gonna take a lot longer to do that, um, to do the ed specs and all that, than to do just a, a Board of Education. Um, once you get the state aspect of it involved, it just, totally increases and so that two million again it, it may come out of there uh, you know and renovation if you're renovating a building or building a new one uh, uh, board office not gonna make any difference to the state they're not gonna pay for anything no sir just the schools it's weird that we don't take that spot at the board of ed and the new middle school there I'm sorry in that spot we were talking about mm -hmm. why couldn't we have put accommodated both 
facilities there. Is it not enough space? Is that what I understand? I would probably say it's not enough space there. Because of the outlying area you need for well, the school? Yeah. If you look at the square footage that the state wants you to have, um, so if it's an elementary school, it's one particular square footage of acreage they want you to have in parking lots. Middle schools, it's larger, and in high school, it's even bigger. you know bigger than that. Um, I would say based on looking at that, it probably wouldn't be okay. enough there. Um, you know, you got the bus loops, you got, uh, you know, there are different options that when we finish this feasibility study, I mean, it may come back and say, hey, you know, leave this here or leave that there. I mean, and that's part of the, you know, the cost analysis for it, so. Uh, leave room for portables when you yeah. don't build oh, it big enough. <laughs> so, um, as as we're not bringing in a million dollar portable again. Here, if you're looking at the FY21 capital request, for the comprehensive building assessment, remember I said we were kind of looking at between 1.5 to $2 million. Again, you'll see this here. Um, you know, interior repairs would be painting schools, uh, two schools. You know, site work um, would be uh, paving part of the parking lot at Queen Anne's County High School um, and uh, another school there. So that, that number stays pretty consistent. I'm gonna do put a... Um the into repair parking lots, a couple of them, you say you do two? Uh, yes, and site work, site work is at okay. 540000 yes. How about some potholes and a couple schools? Well, we fixed quite a few of those this past okay. weekend, but. Okay, good. Um, mm -hmm. The other categories, all right, <clears throat> again, in the, the other presentation, you'll see the line item with all of the objects below it. Um, some of these we can scale back. Um, some of these, as far as uh, safety security is concerned, um, they're at the end of their life cycle. Um, so athletics, uh, that includes the, the resurfacing of the track um, at Queen Anne's County, I'm sorry, Ken Island High School. Um, it also, if you look at Queen Anne's High School, we have all this football equipment and everything mm -hmm. out there that just sits in the rain mm -hmm. um, and that would include a fifty thousand dollar pole barn to put up we would like to do the same thing the following year at ken island um, to make them equal but there's a significant amount of money sitting out there that's just rusting away that we need to do a better job of taking care of um, athletically the classroom technology we bumped that up twenty five thousand dollars um, again, just based upon what we've seen over the past couple years of LCD replacements um, and uh, smart board, interactive boards, custodian equipments there, fleet vehicles. Um, you, you've gone in for 122 on that, but last year we asked for 90. You need even more. Like yes, actually. we've been trying to average 120. Is what we're average 120. Okay. Um, and again. You know, we'll take whatever we can get with that. We try to write grants. Um, fleet vehicles, about 240. This large item here, food service equipment uh, replacement. You'll see in the spreadsheet later on, um, really Bayside Elementary School, Queen Anne's County High School, um, Kennard Elementary School um, are in need of, you know, new equipment. Um, 22 to 40 years old is some of the equipment that's in there. We did write a grant for $80,000 that I do expect us to receive to help. Um, it's kind of like they used to have that aging school fund grant, um, basically, but it is, just deals with food service. And it, it's been out there. We just kind of stumbled across it. Um, I would be surprised if we did not receive that. Um, furniture replacement. Is that going to include lunch tables? Yes. Okay. I'll say this, uh, Ms. Harper, I, about $200,000 of that around there would be lunch tables. Um, for they, for Centerville and? For um, Queens County High School, Kennard Elementary School, Graysonville Elementary School, finish out Churchill. Centerville um, Centerville Middle Hill. Um, I'm not sure if Centerville Elementary, I have to look. No, Centerville Middle. Centerville Middle um, would be in there. It's basically, a lot of those are 22 to 30 right. years old. And right. if you imagine every day you got 1,200 kids at the high schools eating, 
and all of that grime getting in there. It, they're, we've welded them back and forth. We've, you know, fixed them. We had one um, custodian that told us that he had the, he has no more parts. We have no more parts, yes. Yeah. And we've also had some custodians get injured um, because it's hard to get them up. Um, so that that is included. You'll see that a little bit later. Um, we, when we took Sellersville Middle School. Um, the older school, we were able to take some of that equipment and furniture and move it around um, so we didn't have to fund anything. But again, that's, you know, that's been used up. Same thing with Stevensville. We, we shared all of that equipment at other schools. So we have tried to space it out. Um, maintenance equipment replacement, um, we have genies that are 30 years old um, that we really need to replace with scissor lifts. Um, we have a forklift that's 40 years old, um, so we're getting our our life uh, expect expectancies out of these. Um, PA intercom is a large one, and phone system is a large one. Um, you'll see those listed there. The other large item that, if we keep passing it down each year, is the playground replacement. Um, that's at 477, and that would just be to replace the. Churchill Elementary School and uh, the two to five, and Sutlersville Elementary School two to five. There's no grants out there to help with that playground. open space and all that they used to have is kind of dried up a little okay. bit. We checked into that. Um, Parks and Rec, they have a certified inspector that goes out and inspects all of our playgrounds, and we have a list of replacement. Matter of fact, at Churchill and Sutlersville, we've already removed part of the equipment because so once it gets to that age, you know, I don't want to put kids on that. They just don't feel comfortable with it. The athletics, uh, I have a question about that. Sure. Is that just a building at Queen Anne's or does that include some of the stuff that's out there rusting like the sleds? And so that would include putting a building up. They have the, um, the block one out there that really doesn't have a roof. Yeah. Um, you'll see uh, all the sleds. This building will allow us to put all of that equipment inside. So when football season's over, all the sleds go in there, all the helmets go in there. Um, right now, if you go by there, um, there's old sheds that are made out of wood that the equipment's sitting in. Um, it, it's just not, for $50,000 to put something up like that, just so you can house it, you're gonna get, you know, a longer life uh, out of the equipment. And all. But is this replacing the sleds, or does that come out of the athletic budget? No, that comes out of the athletic budget. Okay. Uh, most of, they have some new sleds that they did purchase, um, and like I said, they're just they're sitting out there. Yeah. So if we can get some uh, a longer life out of them, um, Ken Island's in a little bit better situation as far as storage. They still need something, but I've I've talked to both athletic directors. You know, if hey, we're trying to make everything with parity, um, you know, so if we can do one one year and do the other the next year, that would work out. I'll say this: hopefully, it won't cut down on theft. Also, where do they keep? Can I always keep theirs and that building down from the locker room? Yes. Okay. So and it, that's really you know you're putting. So here's a prime example: uh, the high jump mats, the pole vault mats. They're each about fifteen thousand dollars a piece. So you got thirty thousand dollar mats sitting out there that are only be using only being used for three months. If we can get them picked up, put in there, um, we're going to get a longer life out of them. So. And those wrestling mats that are sitting in that mm -hmm. trailer. Those could go in there. And we actually have uh, two uh, trailers. Uh, one's a car container, one's a tractor trailer. It's old that are housing some of the stuff right now. So. Would it be practical to get those, uh, you see those, I call them shipping containers, that actually be put on pod, you know, where we can buy a couple of them? load them if we're going to be nine months not, and then move them off site to let's say up to the county roads board or somewhere in storage and you know if the, county, have, had, if the we, county had equipment to do that we have some of those at okay. our schools right now um the hard part is when you're dealing with those once you pack it mm -hmm. you know you're not getting back to that front Understand. of that but it is an option to look at i mean uh we um at we own the one at Queens County High School. Ken Allen High School um, has a lot of the uh, drama, drama, theater production equipment in there. Um, you know, you can't. Stuff you need on a monthly or 
bi-monthly basis is a problem. But when you said mats for three months and they're going to sit for nine months, to me something like that, or the, or the football sleds, they're going to sit, you know, maybe for four months. You know, I mean, you got to also look at how it, you know, we were kind of envisioning a larger door so that you can actually take a tractor, you know, with a lift on it and pick up the sled because, man, it was, you know, they're pretty heavy items to move. So we're trying to be practical with it, um, looking at that, but we can look at that option too and see I what mean, we can I mean, you know, the yeah. county's got something we can, and they can move it for us and stuff. Yeah. And we can take a look at it. Just um, some items. And the other thing was not having to move all the equipment around as far as maintaining the fields, uh, the turf fields, just having one location to having the equipment in there would be also beneficial. All right, um, so we finish out with a $360,000 um, secured upgrades. You're looking at $500,000 in transportation. Um, that number could go down quite a bit. Um, we are probably going to receive a $40,000 grant for um, getting school buses that are energy efficient through the Maryland Energy uh, Administration. Um, there's also a couple other items that are out there. They could probably, if we do receive them, knock that down to about uh, 216000 which would be the replacement of two buses. Um, so I don't have that secure yet, but that is the potential there to knock that one down some. Just so you know, our cameras and our buses, um, they're 15 years old. Um, so they're in need of replacement. About 250000 of that is in that number right there. But like I said, there are some uh, other sources for that that we're working on. Um, technology uh, plan is 1.4 million. Um, we can talk about that now. Or we can go into it when we have the, the items listed. Um, and then textbooks is about 675,000. I understand why the textbooks are still so high. Are we, I know we have a whole description of what's There's in it. Yes, there is a whole description. The uh, traditionally we've had a budget of um, 500 thousand we're still continuing to work on our curriculum management plan and what the the theme that you'll see in the justification is a lot of these resources are over 15 and sometimes they're pushing over 20 years old standards have changed uh, in some cases there isn't a viable curriculum so we continue to prioritize that list and um, so for an example um, elementary math has been up on our priority list and that alone is probably 600,000 so we've kind of pushed that aside because we weren't able to so we reshuffle the deck and, and reprioritize um, so we're, we're we're moving on our priority list of updating our resources but uh, as you can see from the justification there's there's some stuff that's up okay. thank you sure and the technology plan you said later on because that's a big number that yeah, yeah. How, I'll ask you this do you want when we finish this little portion here I mean, you can either, I can go through the line items, I mean, if you want, and give you a description of ones that you want to talk about, um, you know, I can, we can do it either way. Um, I mean, this, what you're giving us is, is the, what, we, what we need. Is the overview. Is it the overview. Yeah. I mean, and the high level. Got, we've got a couple different reviews to get this. Yes, you know, sir. And, you yes. Know, this thing, isn't so. written in stone. Yeah, this so, is I mean, some wish list on there. This is, hey, these are really... Uh, and necessary and, items. And Mr. Pinter, just to clarify in the technology plan that Mr. Combs, and we can resend that to you in the weekly update this week, but that 1.4, if I'm not mistaken, that has been budgeted out the next five years and has been approved yes. with support from the county commissioner. So, like four years? This is yes. like two. This is year so two. So, we're going in. Year two. This will be right? year three. Year three. Yeah. Year three. Okay. So, the commissioners have. I'm not saying committed, but they've known yeah, and they have, they have committed. So that's we know that they knew going that forward. From the beginning. Yes. So we've been. They knew that. So kind of to give you a ninety-two thousand um, out of that one point four million will be used for infrastructure upgrades. All right. Um, basically, when they had an audit, um, some of our data was uh, you know not uh, encrypted correctly. Um, the large chunk of it, about uh, almost 1.1 million, will come from the third and fourth grade Chromebooks um, to purchase, and then um, about 1.1 million. Um, sorry, well, I'm gonna say 522,200 dollars will be used to purchase Chromebooks for first and second, for third and fourth third grade, third and okay. third and fourth grade, sir. And they don't have them now. 
they have them now, but I'm going to look to Mr. It's, yeah, it's going to be it, it, is the replacements. That's exactly right. Rotation for replacement. So how long? Ha, what, what's the rotation placement? So we've been correct four years. So we're talking every four years this gets done. Each grade four. So each year we have a different right that are on a cycle. But what I'm saying is when we look at this number, and I'm looking at capital, to me four years in capital. Four years is almost you know. Something you, I mean, that's oh, operating. almost well, operating. It's almost like a reoccurring to me. Well, that's where this whole plan's been with it. It's all how you sure. color to eight. Sure. But it just to me, when you're down to four and you're doing this every year, that's the most operating. And you're, they're t you're, we're saying to the commissioners, we need this much money every year just to keep this going. Because and then in four more years, we're going to be we're going to be back at the starting line again. Well, it's that doesn't seem to be capital because of what the of what we're replacing every year. This is yeah, a, they, this one point four is a they pretty consistent number. Put it there. Yeah. Right. They were right. so they didn't want a major effort. They want it in. They wanted it in capital. Okay. And they wanted to know the projection over exactly. what it would cost over the next five years. So we've been up front with them so, on this. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. It's been budgeted. So they could budget. This is my first round. Yeah. I'm just trying to. It's been budgeted out. Yes. So then you got five hundred and fifty thousand. Um, for the ninth to 12th grade uh, student laptops. This will be for lease year number two. Correct. It's the second of a four year lease. Mm -hmm. And then almost $278,000 will be um, fifth to eighth grade uh, student Chromebooks. Um, this will be the year two payment, second year of a four year cycle. So, so that gets some of these payments gets it into your mandatory uh, cost because we have a four-year contract with some of these companies. Mm -hmm. I, mean, I, I, I can see the side keeping in capital for certain reasons. Mm -hmm. Not not this. Well, no, which, but but you, but then you, but then they're looking at not major effort, which is a good thing. Well, if you're going to fund exactly. it every year, what's the difference? Because there'll be a, a percentage of stuff that you're going to sit there and start. I, I I can see it both ways. I can see it coming from both sides of the ship. It, if we get into the true accounting and lifespan and all of that, it should not be in the capital budget, nor would MSDE like to see it there either. Nor would textbooks. Well, nor textbooks. Textbooks definitely, I mean, the state category is called textbooks and instructional supplies for a reason. And we're grateful that it is in capital and not in our MOE. I'm going to say this on the facility side. I'll take it any way I can take it. And that's what we're saying. And, 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 you know, I think and we're, we're just asking sure. these questions because no, we're but you're together. Right. Yes, that's you're right. Right. I mean, sure. you know, they're, you know, it's sure. taxpayers' money, and they've got to do diligence. We've got to do diligence to do what's right for the school system. So I just think, you know, I'm just, just asking the question. No, you're right. I mean, it's, and again, if, when you're looking at the facility side of it, it's all, and that's the hard part here, and it's listed as other categories because, you know, you got transportation, you know, technology textbooks all grouped into one pot of money. Um, the true capital part of it is, yes, facilities, you know, the 15, 20 year investment on something like that. Um, so, you add up all of those numbers, you come out to about 12.2, 12.3 million. Now, remember, some of that can change, some of that's going to have to change. I mean, if you look over, based over the past couple of years, uh, we've been averaging, like I said, 5.5, 5.8 million dollars. So again, you know, we might have to, you know, cut things out of there. But if we don't put it in there, um, like as, again, the two million dollars for planning and design, you know, I don't want to be behind the eight ball and they go, hey, how come you never put this in there? So, you know, we'll find out what the funding is going to be, and then obviously, cuts are going to have to be made to that. Um, you know, going through it today and looking over prioritizing different things. Um, you know, we look at safety, security first, the building envelope. Some things, buses, I can't do without. Um, you know, I'm, I'm talking from my side of the shop, but, you know, I've cut that down, you know, on my list here. Um, if you want to look at. I think if you. If you get, if any of these grants, if they, we've already applied for some. Yes. If any I mean, of them come through, if we could adjust it before well, the March meeting where we yep. we should know something. Presenting to the commissioners. I mean, we have to pare this down. Well, well, that's what I say. We're we're trying. I mean, we're trying to find funds anywhere we can, whether it's a grant, whether sure. it's. Sure. You know, I'm just saying. Oh well, yeah. At that March but, meeting when we approved the budget, mm -hmm. I've not appropriated many of those 
lowerings that you can do and it's, so it, we can tell it's right. realistic as we can get it. And it, it needs to be lowered. Um, again, you know, I just kind of look at it as, hey, if you don't put it in there, you never know. Um, I mean, I'm not sure what the standing is with the county, but, you know, <coughs> if we're getting 5.5 million and we get six and a half million this year, I mean, it's better than what we had, so. Um, now, come look, and we don't know yet because you have a lot. Again, that. don't ask, don't get. But remember, but remember. Reasonable. This is out of control. It's true. Well, it's not out of control. It's, it's, an, it's the needs of the system. 5.5 is what we've averaged. And no I, I, I get that. Yeah, but we don't I, get that wrong. I, let me I, clarify. I that. understand that. 5.5 to 5.8 is what we have been given. We've been asking for around 8 to 9 million a year. But remember, you take that $2 million for design out of there, you take a million dollars out of there for if they're going to break the Kent Island project up into two years, not they as in the county, but the IAC, there's $3 million right there. So you're back down to that $9 okay. million. Okay. So we need to be able to explain that. Yes. So I mean, don't, like I and, said, and, when you and, and there's some significant grants in the future. There's some potential for grants in there. When I say that, I'm talking about four or five hundred thousand in that ballpark I mean nothing in the millions no, but, but, you, but still you, you take, whatever we can get we get and we apply take to four it. and you take three that's above yep. for this this year then you're getting closer to down to five and, and I you know I think it shows our due diligence in trying to get money to help offset things like that I'll say this the state as far as aging schools for anything that used to be 15 years, well, if it was 15 years and older, it still is. That funding is really shrunk. Um, and we, we used to use that funding to do uh, roofing projects, to do um, VCT replacement. You used to be able to paint with that money. Um, you're not allowed to paint with uh, aging school funds. They consider that a cosmetic um, issue. That's so, how they get out of it. Um, again, don't. I know that number is large, but again, three or four million dollars, depending on just a couple projects, will will bring that back down. Um, Say again, just real quick, that Ken Island concept. You're saying the Ken Island. So Ken Island High School roofing project. The um, state does what they call a 50% allocation, then basically a 75% allocation, and then a 100% allocation. Because you might have some school system to say, hey, we really don't need that. We're not going to go forward with the project for this year because our county is not going to fund it. Then they may move that money over to another project, i.e. in Ken Island High School roof. So we're not at that 100% mark, which would not be a terrible thing for us, again, because it's going to be a two-year process. So that um, was a million and something. That, that could be cut into half, half this year, half next year. Look at that chart up there, and what I want to try to point out here is, again, I was talking earlier, that's not what we asked for, that's what we received. So 5.8 million um, in FY19, and in FY20, we had 5.3. Um, that 1.6 million that was unfunded, those were items, um, you know, painting a school, when we were trying to do two schools. Uh, paving two parking lots a year. So you take that 1.6 and you add it on to FY21, that bumps it up. Um, you know, we're just, we're trying to be consistent with every year, um, you know, but if things keep getting deferred, you know, playground equipment at $250,000 a pop, I mean, that's not, you know, you, you pile four projects on there, there's a million dollars right there. If, if we can nibble off one each year, um, that makes it more realistic for us. But we also have to consider the safety of the children. Oh, I agree. In the way we have it laid out now, if we can keep doing one, I mean, we need to do two now, but for our plan for the next several years, we have it all graphed out that we can do get away with, you know, one a year. Um, that big ticket items, yes. they, they truly are. Um, you know, um, in conclusion, just basically, you know, what you see up there is not a lot of new construction. It is replacement. Um, uh, you know, I know the number is large, um, but again, we're you know looking to repair, replace equipment um, to maintain the buildings. Some of the things on there, 
you don't want to wait for like the chillers, things like that. You don't want to wait until the middle of the year and then all of a sudden it goes down. And then, you know, we have to send kids home because there's no air conditioning. I mean, so we're trying to be proactive on some of this instead of reactive. All right. Any questions? Um, would so you? Are we going to go through yes. all of this? Okay. All right. Does anyone um, have any questions? Make one before quick, we? Sure. quick statement. Just just for board um, edification. Keep in mind the capital budget on the cap on the county side. They have line item control on this. So giving them our needs, they're going to make the decisions on what they're going to fund, mm, as opposed to the operating budget where, you know, we have some flexibility. But with the capital budget, if we don't put it out there in front of them. They don't know to fund it. They may not, but they will come back and tell us what is going to be funded here, regardless. I don't say regardless. I mean, they'll take our our uh, wishes into consideration. But just keep that in mind. They have line item control, so if something's not forward to them, they could certainly come back and put money in that what you as a board decided not to fund, or vice versa. But yeah, you're close with the county to make sure you explain where. You know, yeah. and, and I mean, I'm sure they have, they have they have their issues with buildings too. I know. Yes. So you know. And we, you know, he goes like over said, there and does a whole presentation, just like Mr. Fister does for the, the some of the county commissioners that asked for, you know, side. a consistent number, right? You know, and that's what we were trying to give. Um, items like the, uh, you know, the feasibility study, uh, design things, th those occur every few years. You know, our consistent part is that 1.5 to 2 million dollars for the facility assessment is is really what we drive home. And then um, it wasn't until this year when we had some change in staff um, that we noticed uh, the PA systems, phone systems really need uh, some attention to um, to get us back on par um, with that. Okay, uh, so uh, if you don't mind, it's 6 o'clock. Can we take a 15 sure. minute break? Is that all right with everyone? Sure. All right, we'll be back in a few minutes. Thank you. And we are back to the Board of Education's budget work session, working on the capital FY21 budget. Uh, Mr. Pinter is uh, going to get us into the meat and bones of requests. Yes, board members. Um, in the first part of the presentation, we went over um, page one, basically, which breaks <coughs> down the capital state fund match to planning design, uh, the comprehensive building assessment, and the other categories. Um, if you would go to page two, um, the way this is laid out, uh, what I tried to do was give you the category, um, the quantity, um, the location, what project uh, will occur, the cost associated with that, <clears throat> and then a little explanation or uh, description of, of each um, of those items. With the capital state funding match, we've talked quite a bit about the, in the first presentation about these. Um, basically, you're looking at buildings 21 uh, to 29 years old. Um, you know, again, Bayside Elementary replacing the windows doors, chiller at Sellersville Elementary School, um, fire alarm replacement at Sellersville Elementary, and then the roof replacement at uh, Ken Allen High School. One item I wanted to say was, when you're looking at, you're going to see schools grouped together for the past couple years. So Graysonville Elementary School had a new chiller, the fire alarm was replaced. Churchill, same thing, same time frame. Now we're moving on to um, uh, Sullersville. So we're trying to space them out year by year. There is obviously the $2 million as a placeholder for the um, design. Um, and planning architectural uh, for possibly a, a board office. Um, now we get into the facility assessment piece. Um, these are all items that our assessment um, as documented. We go in, take that information out, talk with um, the maintenance department, um, and go over, are you seeing the same thing that our assessment saying? And we're able to get the prices off of there. Um, it has calculations on there. We can also do the inflation. Um, and then the, the great thing about it is after we do um, the replacement of the equipment, we can go into that program, put the cost associated with it in there, and then it will regenerate and let us know, hey, another 15 years, keep this on your radar. You know, this is what you're going to need to do. 
Um, I want to clarify real quick sure. for the public is that that total price number is what the county commissioners are going to ask from the county commissioners. It does not include any state. No, this is all, you're okay. correct, Kelly, okay. it's all uh, county funded. Yes, ma'am. Um, basically, real quick, with the building services, um, Centerville Elementary School, Mattapique Elementary School, um, it's time to replace the, uh, the water heaters there. Um, again, you're talking about a commercial sized um, water heater, not something that would be uh, a residential. Um, we've replaced uh, Graysonville, Bayside. Again, it's, these schools are coming around for that time period. Um, some of our HVAC controllers at the buildings, Churchill, Sellersville Elementary School in Queen Anne's, uh, 20 years old, buying parts on eBay. Um, building shell is where we've really um, tried to hit pretty hard in the past several years. Again, you know, if you have water infiltration or you know, <coughs> rusting from the outside, that's obviously going to lead to problems inside. Um, gutter re um, caps and separation that we need to replace. I can tell you one of them is Mount Peak Elementary School in the courtyard. Um, LED lighting retrofit. Um, <coughs> Delmarva Power is offering a lot of rebates um, to match to put LED lighting in. Uh, that's a number that we could work with there. Um, we want to start, we did start with our gymnasiums. Most of those are retrofitted except for Queen Anne's, which we'll be doing this summer. Um, if you go to Queen Anne's County High School, the exterior doors are all metal. Um, the CTE in the back uh, has rust showing signs of deterioration. Um, again, we're just trying to keep those up to par along with the exterior regular doors. Um, sandblasting, uh, if you go to Ken Allen High School, we did the front um, last year. We also did the front of Queen Anne's High School. Uh, Ken Allen's a little bit different. It has three other sections that are not as large as the front, but they're showing a lot of rust. Um, and, you know, once you get the rust going, it's going to lead to a shorter lifespan. But when, when, we, when you look at this stuff, like exterior doors, and those are something you see every day. Yes, sir. Need to be done, look bad, understand. But then I go up to these gutter and downspouts are something that you might not be as visible to the average person coming in in there, but can cause some real long-term damage. So, yeah. But I mean, do we look at that, and I'm not, when we start prize, you know, putting things in priority, that to me, even though I don't like to see a rusty door, but if I only got $2 to spend, I might want to spend it on gutters than I would a door because the gutters are going to cause some real long-term problems. Yes. And when you look at, um, I should have said this and I apologize. When you look at the list, most of them are um, listed by priority. Okay. So on this sheet, is there, okay. Now, when you look at the category, that is done alphabetically. Okay, just to keep it consistent with your. But when advice. I look at this, you this is your part. Yes. Okay, yep. got you. And I see the gutters up top. Yep. I, I do have a question. Yes, so these numbers that are on here, um, from the time that we so this is an estimated cost. S yes, some of our estimated costs based upon our calculations of our facility assessment, which has been pretty accurate okay. uh, the past two years. Uh, so the price of the doors, the price of the people replacing it. Uh, and then what we've also done with contact companies and just basically, hey, here's what we're looking at. Um, what are your prices coming in at? Um, and then we contact you know, two or three companies doing it just so we have a ballpark um, figure. The last thing I want to do is go back to the county commissioners and go, hey, uh, I kind of shortchanged this project. Um, the numbers aren't inflated, um, but I mean, you might have like a five or 10% overhang there just because you, know, you, you start know. getting into something, you never know. And um, it could take up to a year to get it done. Mm -hmm. The prices quoted here, you know, in January may not be the same prices come next yeah. January. And, and, like, I was surprised last year, like, for the paving. They, they, those prices came in at a pretty good price for us. Um, again, with petroleum base, you know, you never know. I mean, it, it could go up. Something could happen, it could go up. So, um, But then when these things are sent out, they're bid anyway. So yes. then, then we have a, I mean, these are good estimated numbers, yep. but you have solid, I mean, we get yes. bids, plenty of things. We'll, we'll have bids on that, or, or specs, on that. specs, yep, it's not. Um, Pell no. Yeah, or if we can piggyback on something. I um, mean, I'll say when we piggyback on something, if there's a couple of different scenarios we can look at, we look at that, and then we also try to get a, another price just to make sure what you're piggybacking on is, is a good price, because mm -hmm. uh, sometimes it may not be. 
Okay. Um, All right. Well, thank you. I didn't uh, so. mean to put a monkey wrench in it. Oh, you're fine. And it's materials and labor. Yes, ma'am. Yep. Um, if you flip over to the third page for interior repairs, again, this is where we're going back um, trying to paint two schools a year. Um, you know, interior, exterior. Um, and if you look at the explanation on the side, you know, uh, Bayside Elementary School, 29 years. Um, you may wonder why, hey, why is Manapeak Elementary School uh, at 16 years there? Manapeak Elementary School, most of our schools are built with block walls. When you go to Manapeak Elementary School, it's all sheetrock. Um, it's not designed to take the wear and tear of uh, that many students coming in and out every day. So that's why you see that one above there. Um, Ken Allen High School flooring, VCT, um, has a life uh, cycle. If you can go with Terrazzo, which costs, is, is the most expensive, but it is the longest lasting. Um, they have some expansion joints there. We were cited um, in one of our inspections there uh, to correct that problem. Um, both locker rooms uh, at one at Queen Anne's County High School and Ken Allen High School, uh, if you picture the amount of students that go through there every day, and then you put all the athletic teams that go through there, they're in desperate need of being repaired and replaced. We have fixed the ceilings in there, we fixed the floors. Um, now it's time to uh, take care of the walls. Um, Ken Allen High School bathroom counter top sinks. Um, if you go in that high school, most of those are laminate. They're, they're not designed to withstand uh, everyday use like that. They are um, peeling, chipping, um, really some of them are dangerous uh, in eyesores. We're proposing to go in there with uh, uh, three fixtures and a uh, replacement, not going back with the laminate so we get something longer lasting and it's more commercial. Porcelain. Yep. So, um, we always have various classrooms that we like to have um, painted just based upon, you know, the damage that is done to them each year. You know, uh, we try to keep that in there. Clocks, if you're looking at that, we have some schools that are still, you go through and you have to reset every single clock when it's daylight savings time, yep. or you have to go through and uh, the bell schedules because it's not done, um, you know, through uh, remotely. Bayside Elementary School is one school we converted over. It's got a sensor there. We don't have to touch anything. It just automatically converts it over um, one of those items. Site work, um, Queen Anne's County High School, Churchill Elementary School. Again, we're looking to um, pave those, mill and pave them. If you've been up to Churchill, we've had to do some minor repairs at, uh, there's a, a, a drain that runs through there that we've had to work on. Um, a major need of repair. Substructure, uh, roof repairs, um, that's basically what we're accounting for um, each year that we went back and looked at our numbers. Expansion joints are mainly in the walls, sidewalks, bricks. That is something that was identified in the facility assessment um, and we haven't touched yet. Uh, so I kind of need to start hitting on that one. Here's where you see the athletics. You see some of these items, some of them uh, throughout this uh, presentation. Some of them are from uh, principals, athletic directors, maintenance. You know, we're trying to take in the full gamut and then narrow them down. Ken Allen High School's track was, is 22 years old. Um, industry recommends a track probably a maximum lifespan of 15. Um, I talked about the storage building. Here's a uh, question. Yes, ma'am. I thought the, um, the students that are in the uh, construction. We've, we've tried that, um, and they have a lot of projects already going oh, on. Oh, okay. And then... Yeah, but wouldn't but, that be awesome? It would. And we've tried it before, but what happens by the time they get them to the level they need to do it, it's like graduation time okay. or the other projects they're on. Okay. We do try to get them to do things... Um, but something of that magnitude. I just it, think it'd be a really cool project for them. Yeah. We, we've tried that. Sorry. No, you're fine. We'll have um, an agreement with a business for some of our CTE students to move into the partnership. 
Andrew, do we have an internship with a construction company? Sure, we do. We in Ames County. We we do not not necessarily youth apprenticeship. Right. In yeah, that program, if is that is that what you're referring to? I was wondering to? about mm -hmm. that. Yes. Yeah. No, it's only in the marine technology okay. at the moment. Right. But we're trying to expand. Okay, sorry. All right. Um, the combo soccer goals at Kellen High School, that is something that we're <clears> – <throat> football takes its toll on the Bermuda fields because they're constantly playing in the middle of the field. Um, what we've done at Queen Anne's, and it worked out pretty well, is rotating uh, the fields that – the sports are playing on so that we can set it up so soccer may have the football practice field for a couple years then we switch them over um, you can resod the Bermuda fields and they're not tearing them up as much um, so that's an option that we looked at and you know recommend um, the speaker systems that is again something that came up um, I don't know if you've been in both high schools but when you're trying to listen to um, please don't park your cars in the fire lane. Uh, you will be ticketed. You don't really hear what they're saying. Um, just some of those items. Okay, on the next page, classroom technology. I talked about the lifespan. Um, you know, Kennard Elementary School, Centerville Middle School, those items, they're coming in 10 years um, and start needing to be replaced. There's really no line item in our operating budget. So a lot of these items that uh, LCD projectors were coming out of the operating fund for maintenance, it, it wasn't designed or funded for that. Um, so that's why you see that. Custodian equipment, um, as I told you before, we're trying to get away from um, using the uh, strippers and the chemicals to uh, do the floors in the summertime. One, we got summer school going on at a lot of the schools. You got migrant school going on. Um, a lot of PDs taking place. Uh, it, it's just, it's more, it's a better, healthier situation. Um, Mr. Pender, you have six schools listed, but you're asking for seven. Yes. There's another um, elementary school in there. I just didn't put it. I couldn't oh, squeeze okay. it on there. I apologize. I just, no, you're fine. That's so fine. They're, they're roughly $11,000 a piece? Uh, about that. Yep. Okay. Um, and again, using those, we will not have to purchase a stripper, which is going to cut that cost out of there, um, which will be a, a pretty sizable amount of money that we won't have to use annually every year. The other items you see are just all replacement. Um, they've been around 10 years, 15 years, or 20 years. Um, we got some propane burnishers. They don't even make parts for them anymore. Um, we truly do get the maximum life out of the equipment we have. Um, maintenance equipment. If you're looking at that, we're talking about having, uh, you know, two scissor lifts. We were able to purchase two this year um, to get away from the genie lifts that are over 30 years old. Um, you know, it, just an age thing. Um, these will enable us to actually go in and do a um, row of lights or ceiling tile on the scissor lift, where right now you go in on the genie, you put the four feet down, you go up in the air, you fix what you got to fix, you come down, you move it five feet, you put the feet down. It's just, it's not a good work practice of doing that. Um, Are these things are the size and you can move them from one school to yep. another if they're... 32 inches wide. So you can take... We them. have a trailer that we purchased that we can load them up on. Um, and it's, we've just purchased... Quality carpets for yep. different schools. Yep. Okay. Um, warehouse. Um, you know, we have a standalone forklift that's 35 years old that no longer works. And we have a propane uh, ride-on one that is 40 years old. Um, if you've seen a pallet of paper that we uh, load up every day pretty much and transport to schools, you know, we, we need some little bit better equipment working out there for them. Um, so um, fleet vehicles. Most of these items are replacement. The only one at the top you're going to see is a bucket truck. Um, we currently borrow uh, Department of Public Works whenever we can. Um, the problem with that is they're using it quite a bit. So the next thing you know, you get seven or eight pole lights out, and then we have an issue of safety and security going on. Um, 
with the bucket truck, we can do all the pole lights. We can also do all the wall pack lights on the side of the building. Um, you know, it, that's kind of a, an issue that would be make us a little bit more efficient. Because right now, if we get a ticket on a light being out, it could be two weeks before we get it fixed. You know, it just depends on if the county's using the truck or not. Um, going down that list, uh, you see two E350 utility trucks. Um, those are 20 to 16 years old with over 200,000 miles. Um, you see an F250, um, you know, truck. Again, I'd say for probably 10 to 12 years, we never purchased any vehicles. There wasn't a replacement. Um, we're trying to get back on that. We've been pretty successful the past two years of doing that. Um, I kind of see us within the next two or three years getting to the point where we're just replacing one to two vehicles. It's not, hey, we have something from 1989, 1990, 1991, it's got to go. Uh, Do our maintenance people each have one assigned vehicle? Uh, yes. Okay. Um, and if we do increase, this will help us out. I mean, because, you know, having two guys in one truck and going. It just well, I mean, if he come. has one truck, then Monday morning he calls you up and says, I don't have it on my truck. Well, you had it, didn't have it on your truck Friday either. Mm -hmm. So it kind of, but when he gets a new truck, I've had experiences that, you know, it saves you in the long run. Oh, yeah. If they're assigned to one truck, they're responsible yes, for it. They, each person is assigned to their own particular truck. So that's how it's designed. Um, gas or diesel? Gas, I hope. These are all gas. Um, flipping over to food services, again, this is where I believe we're going to uh, get about an $80,000 um, um, grant um, to help replace food through MSDE, uh, food service equipment. Um, a lot of them, as you'll see, I don't really want to go through the whole list. No. Um, but starting at the top, going down to about three quarters of the way, they're just items that are 29 years old. Um, some of the refrigeration you can't purchase anymore um, for the milk coolers. Um, but uh, how long did the health department give you to get rid of some of this stuff? <coughs> I mean, once they've noticed it and they're inspecting. Once they see it, they don't want to see it the next time it comes right. through. So I will say they are very good to work with and they understand that we have a budget um, and you know most of this is funded through the capital budget um, so those items you see if this does get for any of this does get funded we could have this replaced by summertime or summer, yes in the yes summer. Yep. okay and does our food vendor give us some money for um, equipment or not no. we, we supply everything they, these are our it's our equipment our, yep. we supply the equipment the space Electricity. I mean, I don't know if somehow we, we're We pay getting... for the food, too, right? They pay for the food. Yeah. We, they. We, they make the money off of it. We're reimbursed for that. Yeah, but do we pay for the invoices of the food? Yeah, on that. So you, the commodities through the, USD. The commodities is, go is through, donated. yeah. Okay. I will, you just remind me of something. Thanks for saying that. The one item you see on there, um, for sensors to let you know when uh, the temperature is down. We have those on some of our schools, our newer ones. Sellersville. Um, temperatures of? Freezers. So Regions. freezers, reach in, no, of walk-ins. Okay. So picture. Uh, oh, I see, allow, oh, okay. Picture July 15th on a Saturday, Fine. and it goes down, all your commodities are in there. Yeah, um, they're gone. You know, it's a, a good investment. Um, flipping over to furniture replacement, a, looking over that again, those are the tables we talked about. Um, going towards the bottom, you know, you're looking at uh, damaged chairs, desks, um, you know, requests that came from the schools. Um, you know, it would be nice to get back on a rotation basis again with the tables. It's going to be a big hit at first, but. Um, you know, we can work through that. Miscellaneous, um, these are items that the schools had brought up. Um, a lot of the soccer goals that the middle school students have um, have either been damaged or destroyed, so they really only have one. Um, Queen Anne's County High School, the curtains, some of those are the original. Um, 
you know, in uh, seeking replacement, we have cleaned them several times, uh, which is an added cost. And then you see the, uh, the new light board for the auditorium to go along with the light structure. Flipping over to PA Intercom, you know, uh, the PA Intercom for, again, Graysonville, Kent Island High School, Centerville Elementary, Sellers Elementary, you're looking at schools that are all in the same time frame of construction, and it's just that point where we've delayed it for year after year, um, you know, that, again, we're buying parts off of eBay, um, you know, we're having a hard time finding those. And as technology, it gets outdated very quickly. Um, phone systems, Centerville Elementary, Mattapique Elementary, Ken Island High School, and as you know, the board. Um, you look at the board price tag on that, we're trying to install something that if we do move to a new building, we will be able to take that system with us. So it's Can it just, be expanded? Yes. It wouldn't be where once we drop $55,000 and if we do get funded for a new building, it stays here. It, we will be able to take this with us to the new building. But it, we also need to be able to, in case we have the extra classrooms or extra. Yep. So, and that's a good point. And, and that's one of the things at Ken Allen High School is over the time, there's been added rooms in this, and the situation down there doesn't allow for more room numbers to be added. It's maxed out than what it is right now. Um, playgrounds, I talked to you about that earlier. You're looking at Churchill. <laughs> Sellersville Elementary School, $472,000. Um, again, not uh, very uh, cheap items there. Um, portables, you know, this is something on there where we have replaced all of the, the, uh, the roofs. We've done all of the siding on the portables, and we're looking for um, to replace the doors and the windows on there. Again, this is all of them grouped in there. Could we, you know, do what we did before with the siding and the roofs and take four or five a year and work on it? Sure, we can do that. That's not a problem. Security. Um, we'd like to keep moving forward with that item um, and keep replacing the uh, classroom doors with a secondary locking mechanism device so that the teacher in the middle of the incident doesn't have to run. Um, outside, stick their key in, turn it, and lock it. Um, you'll say, why do you have 11 schools on there? Because uh, Sellersville Middle, Stevensville, um, Mattapique Middle already have those devices. I mean, that's $600,000 each, roughly. Yes. No, two, it's 248000 248 total. 248 okay. Divided by 11. Divided by 414 mechanisms. Oh, yeah, well, that's, that's, that's only. I just put that in there for account. I mean, Which is what we talk about twenty thousand dollars, yes. twenty three thousand dollars a school. Oh. oh, you're going by school. I'm going by each of six hundred dollars a piece. Yeah. Window film. Um, if you look at a lot of the schools that were built, mm -hmm. you walk into the vestibule, it's nothing but glass. I mean, anybody can knock that out or shoot through it, and that's what happened in uh, uh, in Connecticut. Um, we did as a test pilot Centerville Elementary School. And it's worked out very well with the film that you put on there. Um, it doesn't make it bullet resistant. It makes it shatter. So you're not going to just shoot through and walk through it. Um, you know, again, you're looking to buy a few seconds here and there, um, you know, for the students and the staff uh, and visitors. When we visit our schools, a lot of them have better entries than others. A couple of them have, I, I'm not saying unsecure, but easier access. To it. I don't see anything in here for a couple of those. So they were funded through a grant. Okay, uh, so they are coming down a lot. Yes, so this summer will be Queen Anne's County High School and Kennard Elementary School. And that was funded through the Maryland Safe Schools uh, grant. So that's something that's been taken care of, but not through. So some of the, some items on here you won't see that are funded through those grants. Um, you know. But you'll let us know about that. Oh, sure, yeah. yep. Okay. Thank you. So that's, uh, yeah, Queen Anne's and uh, Kennard. Um, just cameras, you know, that we've identified some of the schools, hey, we have a dead spot here, we have issues going on, can we, you know, put an additional camera there? Um, I will say... Queen Island High School, I mean, uh, Queen Anne's County High School, we looked at. Yep, that's the part stairs. of that. The stairs, mm -hmm. that stairs, yep. that stairwell, mm -hmm. thank you. And before I forget, 
we did get receive money through a grant to um, finish Ken Island High School, the oh. Maryland State School grant. Okay. Um, the upstairs wings do not have cameras in them. But right. we did just finish all the elementary schools, have all interior cameras in there now. Um, that, and we have one school tied into MDO, which law enforcement can then get on and watch. Uh, we also have the mirrors in the corners of those wings. That, um, at Ken Island? Yes. No, the cameras have picked that up, but we can put mirrors up there too. A mirror in those corners would, the, would go a long way too. I mean, because a teacher standing in those hallways, they're not going to see what's on the camera. No. But if they can look in a mirror in a corner and see down that hallway, that would be... Oh, we're only talking about safety that's and fair. security. Yep. No, that's fine. I'm just making a note. Yeah, because that hallway too at Queen Anne, that uh, mirror. Yes, way. yeah. Do we have cameras in any of the classrooms? No. Just when you talk about classrooms, if you want to consider the gym, you know, a, a classroom, um, but not in any classrooms. They're all in the hallways, um, cafeteria, uh, gymnasium. With the last go around we just completed, we were basically able to get at least two cameras um, in every gym and two cameras in every cafeteria. Some have a little bit more, but um, not not in the classrooms. And, and you know, exterior, yes. I was thinking your special needs classrooms, if there's a medical emergency and it's left to a student to use a phone who's not capable of using a phone. Okay. Something to think about. You know, and we ask you a lot of questions I'm about sorry. security. And it's real good, to, and I think we do that when we do our views, but sometimes some of this stuff probably doesn't need to be announced as much as po yeah. any more than possible. So, you know, what you, what you tell us, tell us what you think we need to know, and if you sure. think we need to know more at a later date, tell us. But, you know, for security purposes, I think we do a lot of things around this county that I'm not, I mean, I've been more aware of being a board member, but that I'm pretty impressed that we are taking good control over it but that you know you're doing a lot of due diligence along with the other staff to make sure that our schools are as safe as they can be we're getting there it, it's constantly changing and you know right to roll them all with those the different threats and thank you this county it's a good partnership mm -hmm. challenges are changing yeah. too and we, we have good work relationship with the sheriff's yeah, office i, I can't they, say they, enough about yeah. them centerville pd i mean anytime i pick up the phone i can talk directly to the major the sheriff or the chief i mean um Transportation, uh, real quickly, um, that would be for two special needs buses um, that have met their 15 years. Uh, that is where we can get a $40,000 grant and knock that down to about $176,000. Um, I don't want to go too much into it, but those next three items, um, the replacement cameras, um, 250000 If you remember last year, we asked for 99000 to do some of the buses. Basically, um, all buses, county owned and um, contractor, would be 250000 We're working on some different arrangements right now that I think we might be able to take care of a lot of that. Um, but that is an item that we really need um, to consider is the cameras. Um, Technology plan. Back up, back up to yes, the and, and I've asked this question Go before. You, you tried to beat it in my head, That's which you have. The buses, we can't do something with, and I, I use the word van, something less for, because I mean, a lot so of these needs are only one or two children. And I mean, I want to be safe and I want to be in compliance, but it just is a lot of money for. It is a lot of money. You're, you're looking at uh, type one and type two. I just saw a bill yesterday where Wicomico is trying to get some waivers to use vans to transport students. Um, I think they might have put the cart before the horse and, and purchased the vans, um, you know, and now trying to go backwards. But with, with that being said, um, still the, the safest mode is putting them, you know. And that's school. a state requirement. Yes, you gotta, it have. has to match the specifications you have in Comar. There's a type one, there's a type two. And I, I can get Margaret Allen to get you all that stuff. Oh, if you look but, into it, I, I have yeah, no problem. It's the just... other problem you're going to run into is, you know, all of a sudden, Johnny's riding on a school bus, which is more naturally protected and designed for those kinds of hazards. And then now all of a sudden you're going to put another student in a vehicle that doesn't have that. 
those protections in there, just going to put them in a car or a van. I mean, you know, trying to make everything equitable. Um, uh, witnessing different bus accidents, it's amazing what happens to the bus as far as a scratch. Looking at the car that hit it or it hit the car, you know, um, yeah, it is, a, you're right, it, it's a major cost. But I will Which say is this. It's a big number for the difference if. We have more students riding our special needs buses, you know this, than we ever have. And for us to have five or six wheelchairs on one bus used to be unheard of. But now, you, okay, it's yeah. not all just one. That's what I mean. No. You know, if you got three on a bus, the cost is incidental. Yeah. It's when you have that one that to me is not so that you have that, and then also you figure into the homeless population that we're transporting. Um, you know, can we pick them up with a county bus that's going by or coming back from a special? They said the homeless people were picking up on some of those buses. Mm -hmm. yep. Okay. We try to get whatever bus is going in that route. Or if we can get a bus that is, say, picking up somebody in Churchill, Chestertown area, and then you know, their home school is Mattapeak, is there a way that we can transport them to meet another bus to go down to cut down on the cost? Okay. So, um, Mr. Paluski, did you want me to talk about, or did you want to talk about the technology, sir? Sure. We can go over it pretty quickly. Uh, if you remember back in December, and I'll, I'll, I'll give this to you again in your um, board weekly board update, the presentation that Mr. Holmes, Mr. Combs did. Um, the infrastructure upgrades, uh, that is to replace Power School the student information system. Remember, this came from uh, the legislative audit uh, to serve the hardware for the data encrypting, uh, also to replace the firewall uh, and the speed and the, re the redundancy. Uh, in case of a failure. That was an audit finding. The third and fourth grade Chromebooks, that's to replace the third and fourth grade um, student Chromebooks. And then you'll see again um, with the high school to be able to do the high school student laptops, uh, the second year of a four year lease, that's nine through 12. And then the Dell Chromebooks, that three year, year three payment, the three out of the four year, that's grades five through eight. Um, and again, we've been kind of operating on, on that number of uh, 1.4 million over the next five years. And I will be happy to share the entire five-year plan so you can even see the outlier years. But that's what um, we've been working towards budgeting. And we had a we had a average of funds in 20? We, we, we had a, the technology plan though put out there, there were some certain things that Mr. Combs had to repurpose because they were it was not fully funded I mean we got a majority of the funding so when he went and made the purchase that he could there's forty two thousand dollars left over in the FY 20 funds that will be used to supplement this mm -hmm. but again it's a it's a one-time use of those funds going forward but we are at uh, uh, requirement of one point four uh, to keep us on par but there are some things in his plan that were not funded in the prior year in the technology in the Chromebooks and the uh, High school leases. Mm -hmm. One's five twenty-two and one's five forty-nine. For the sake of argument, I'm using this as being the same price within a couple of up twenty thousand dollars. One's five twenty-two, one's five forty forty-nine. So, so one is a purchase. So we're going to outright purchase those. The other is a, a, the ninth, the twelfth grade laptops. They're much more expensive. So the cost of those is nearly two million dollars, and we're paying five hundred thousand a year. And I guess because my question was for the. We're getting for two grades. We're getting. We're spending the same amount of money as four grades. So, we're we're, we're flat out purchasing this for five hundred twenty-two thousand. And how many? Of, how many of those are we purchasing? I'd have to go back. Yeah, uh, but it's for third and fourth right. grade. I, the numbers I'm thinking are in the in the technology plan. But we're actually purchasing it. So for one time, one year, we're buying all third and fourth grade laptops, uh, Chromebooks. Mm -hmm. For the ninth to twelfth, that is a four-year lease. So for the ninth to 12 laptops, that's costing us over $2 million, of which we're leasing it over the course of four years. So this is a, this is a 549 reoccurring cost? For four years. Yes, sir. So this 549 is gonna, is once we sign up for this. We already, we already have, have, because this is year two of the lease. <coughs> this yep. current year we're in was year one of the release renewal, because we were just came out of a four year lease. This, 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 this is an item we have no choice over. Correct. I mean, obviously, we have a choice over, but we are committed to it. Correct. Yes, we have a contract with Dell for this. 
know, when we do that, I mean, I'm, it's, it's our prerogative, but we we explain to the commissioners and our funding sources that this is going to be a, a four-year yeah, commitment. Purpose of 500 and some. Purpose of the technology yes. plan, yes, sir. They asked for this. Yes. Yeah, but I, mean, I, didn't, I just asked this question. I mean, Otherwise, no, 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 no. Understand it too. $2 million dollars all this year, started. all at once. Understand. All this started, this was... But I mean, you know, when we come in, when, you know, when Sid was talking earlier about how big of this number this is, some of this stuff has already been spent on a yeah. four-year program, so there's another half a million dollars out of that, well, we were at 12, you take three off for a couple special projects, you take another half a million off this, you know, you're back getting down to where the more normal number is, if you look at all this stuff in a, in a big scope of things. Mr. Smith, to, you, to your question at the high school level, give or take throughout the system, we have about 500 students per grade level. Right. So that would be roughly in the neighborhood of about 200,000, I mean 2,000 devices, Yeah. give or take. I think we have about 2,400 high school. In high school, each high school is about 1,200 kids in it. Correct. And then I would just, that, I guess third and fourth if you. Well, you might as well figure that we have 7,700 students. Just on our You figure about 5,000 of them have Chromebooks. Absolutely. That's, so a better way. Which, That's a better way of looking at it. And it's completely how we run instruction. Mm -hmm. I know. I just, I mean, everything I've seen on this page has a number, except when I got down to these technology plan. And I did, and it's just, it is what it is, but I just like to know that sure. I like to divide numbers, see unit numbers and stuff, and see sure. where we are. The Chromebook is about one third the price of a laptop. The laptops, I mean, the kids have, my son's got the same one all four years. Mm -hmm. yes, and they take better care of you know, they really do, the high school kids. And, and that does not include any of your iPads, correct? Correct. Correct. Is there a line item where we're not doing anything in that line item this year? I believe in part of our supplemental. In that, that hundred thousand. Um, technology. Technology course. replacement. Yep. About carts. Is there a couple carts in there too? The carts are included in, in that. In, in uh, these numbers here. Yep. Okay. That's a great thing. I mean, you put them all away. They charge yes. up. I mean, that, yes. that, that, that was something. And you can move them around. I saw them. And so what space board. savers they Keeps are. Keeps them in better shape. Mm -hmm. And we're also repurposing. I mean, that's one of the things we just met with our elementary um, principals with that Mr. Combs is repurposing. As he's switching these out, we've been able to repurpose them, re-image them, and put them back in the elementary school as another set of a, of a, of a resource. So they've been nice. greatly appreciated. And the elementary, they mm -hmm. stay in elementary school. Yeah, yes. they don't come. Mm -hmm. right. And keep in mind, like the technology, I mean, we all have our phones, we all have our new laptops and everything here, but you know, there is a lifespan and to, to these devices. So uh, and they're getting used every day. <laughs> they're getting used the every day. Um, it's not connected to the wall, is it? Huh? No, but uh, it's, 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 it's paid for. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's for, for Christmas. Don't laugh at it. <laughs> I can't text him. Don't text him. Right. I can't text him. I do take a text, just I can't send him. <laughs> Mr. Polisky, do you want to do? Yep. Yeah, would you like me just to highlight? Mm -hmm. I'll, I won't read all these. Well, here's you know, a question. Line line. Here's a question I have before we even get into this. Sure. I, I, I mean, we have all this Chromebook technology, and we still have textbooks. So I, that's what I'm getting. How come you're spending so much money on textbooks? What do you need a textbook for? So I'm seeing this music, ELAs, sure. health. I think one of the big misconceptions, and Harvard's done a research study on this for the last 20 years, is that one of the misconceptions is because technology has evolved and everybody thinks that is purely 100% the way to go, what the research says is a blended approach. So it's not only online, but it's also having a, a physical text as well to meet the individual needs right. of a child. So when we can, in some cases, it's purely online. So for an example, at our, our discovery education that is in, we'd supplement that in social studies at, at, at the middle school level. Um, but as we've talked about before, the cost of materials continues to rise. Um, and that's what you'll see reflected here. But the, the, I think the big thing to take away from this is that in some of our areas, um, which is what's prioritized here, is they're completely outdated resources. And a lot of times what you'll see is that standards that have been revised, such as uh, I believe back in 2015 when the National Visual and Performing Arts Standards had all changed, um, many of those resources that we're currently using are not even aligned to those standards. So. As Mr. Bell has been revamping our arts, as you saw that, um, we're trying to play catch up uh, in the arts area that hasn't had a lot of attention. Um, 
again, we constantly prioritize. Um, you know, this is certainly a wish list of needs, and we're happy with whatever that, that we can get in the capital budget as it relates to textbooks uh, and, and or what we call tech books that will be able to have that resource. And um, we'll reprioritize and, and go forward with, with the request. But um, we also have an, in the Division of in Curriculum Instruction, similar to the technology plan, we have a five-year textbook, tech book plan. So we can sit down with budget and finance and look. Uh, for, I'll give you a really good example. Elementary reading uh, is up for an adoption. Um, right now it's going into year six. That was a million dollar purchase. We don't have the resources to be able to do that, but more importantly, we feel we're in good shape. We don't feel that we need to update that right now, so that's not a priority. So I'll use that as an example. You know, when you look at math and you look at reading, those are you know two primary core areas, um, you know, that that are essential. But I'm happy if you want me to go through this, or are you just no, you know know that it's there, questions. and we'll be ha I'd be happy to answer mm -hmm. any questions. The other thing, if I could, if I could add to that is. In, in lieu of a physical textbook, if we were to move to some kind of electronic, the cost is going to be there. Um, maybe in some instances, it could even be greater than the physical textbook, and then depending on the life, well, I remember some there. of the software apps that we were talking about. The licensing, about. The right. Then you have a reoccurring cost of a license. <clears throat> right. Or if you can do a license over a five-year period, but then once you get there, which would, what we normally do is try to, when we negotiate that, is that it's not a, a one-time shot. We can, we can divide that up. It's more expensive to do that way. Um, so we try to do it up front so we can save some money in the long run. I have a question about this. So your, your class is with your hard text. Is there a companion for the computer? Because there's nothing more frustrating than a child getting home and asks, where's your text? I can't help to, you if I can't read it. To, today, um, with the exception of maybe a couple CTE areas um, where it's, you're looking at a very technical manual the vast majority, I would say 99.9%, .9 anything that's created today, if it's a hard text, has some kind of digital resource with it. Okay. So that in that case, um, you know, and a lot of times we'll, we'll, we'll do a, a lot of times what we'll do is we'll purchase a class set so that stays mm -hmm. and then that companion can be online and, and utilized at home as well. Okay. So it's, and I think that's back to that blending of, of having something physical as well as something that supports online at home. Okay. Thank you. That's a great question. All right. Do we have any more questions about capital? I had one. Okay. Just going back to the marquee at the Queen Anne's County High School, are they, what type of marquee are they looking at? Electronic or? They would like an electronic. A, um, the standard one uh, runs about six to $8,000 for just flipping the letters. Um, the digital one is about $20,000. Now, do you have to have a county permit in order to get those put up? Town permit. Or town. Well, that's in a town. So, okay. And then if you've seen, they went through this whole thing where some of them were allowed, some of them weren't allowed, then it can only change so many times. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we get these requests quite frequently um, for the marquees. You know, it's you're looking at it, you're like, okay, I got a roof leak. <laughs> You know where, what, you know. Where do you spend it? It's a great communication source. Don't get me wrong. It's just unfortunately, um, you know, it kind of gets towards the bottom. But there's, I would not be surprised. And I, maybe you guys know it. If that one was an original one that it, was there. It was there when I was there. All right. So. <laughs> it, and it sits so far back. It's yeah. hard to see anything that's on it. That, yeah. Well, my that, old eyes yeah. can't see what's on it. Uses the manual and put. And that's where you're running about six to eight thousand dollars for those. The that's digital true. ones are about twenty. Yeah, I mean it is. They're out there putting little numbers. I mean, but you're right. You're if it got into, it's in the but if it got approved, we would have we, to. We would through. find out before we do anything yes. what the regulations. Yep. Because I know the in Centerville, the fire has one. But you're very correct. Mm -hmm. There was a big argument on how many times it changes. Mm -hmm. If it's flash, because we don't want to look like quote unquote Richie Highway or something. Yep. Uh, it's too distracting to drivers because Kettle and Firehouse had the same issue. Yeah. <laughs> Are these textbooks uh, listed in priority order also? Or not? You're a big textbook. They, they are not necessarily in priority order, um, but certainly the, the, the larger dollar amounts, I guess you could look at that as a priority. Okay, that's right. Well, I like the way Sid did that. Is, you know, with yeah, that, that makes it. That makes it easier, at least 
and it might change, but at least you kind of got a, you know, kind of a test to see what's there. So um, it's not on the agenda, but Mr. Pfister does have some information to give to us on the operating budget, and I would like to go ahead and entertain that idea. So you need a, you have time? You need a motion that uh, uh, it's a work it. session, so no, I don't think so. This is an open agenda; it's okay. fine. Okay. Um, if you wouldn't mind for casting that around. One more for Mr. I, it's, it's sitting in my office, but I'll, he can have this one when I'm done. I've had my own copy and I must have left it in my office. But yes, I will get you one. I give this to him. Okay. Well, I'll get Jackie one. Thank you, Mr. Redhead. Is now, we have this one before. This is updated. Yes. This is updated. Yes. So this has been. Look down in the bottom left, it'll say 212, today's date. So that's how we're referencing the new ones. Gotcha, this was 12. Oh, okay. Gotcha, okay, gotcha, okay. Yeah. So, Ms. Harper, are you ready? Yes, please. Okay. All right. So, um, as we've gone through these work sessions, we've, we've worked from these two particular documents. I call the blue one the non-school, uh, which we're not going to address tonight because that, at the last work session, we kind of went through that and made <laughs> our um, uh, last bit of changes and, and things like that to be presented to the board. But we did have some further discussions with the uh, administration and we have now come back with some revised numbers for the school-based positions. And just, just for edification purposes, if it's stricken out, um, that means it is not going forward uh, to you as a recommendation. Um, if it has a dollar amount and an FTE amount and the wording and is not stricken out, then that is one of the recommendations going forward. So there were a couple changes that we did do uh, since the last version. So we are recommending to um, increase the pre-K teaching by 0.48 at Centerville Elementary School for a cost of $34,560. The title at Centerville Elementary School, one of our two class size reduction teachers is there at Centerville. And as we've talked about, the Title II grant is getting funded less and less and less, where the grant is not able to support that. We have no idea with the new federal budget where the Title II grant funds are going to be because they have been reduced with current administration who knows where they're going to be. So the recommendation is to pull those teachers in from the grant funding into local funding. So when that one is recommended as going forward. When will we find out if it's grant funded? Well, the budget isn't until October, but the, the idea here is the grant even at our current rate with salary increases cannot afford to keep both class size reduction teachers in there. So I don't want to use the term mandatory, but this is mandatory to move this in there. Um, and I think my note on the the second Centerville Elementary grade two teacher, are you talking about that one? No, we're talking about uh, okay. 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 the grade okay. ones that, that, that we're recommending going yep. forward. Okay, yep. got it, never mind. Um, Centerville Elementary School, again, to marry up with the additional pre-K, there is a pre-K para. This currently um, is, they have supports for a part of the day through a five-hour para, and um, this would make that a full-time position, and the cost is offset by the reduction of the five hours. So that's why the cost for that para there is only $24,000. That was the netting of those two positions. So the positions that are struck through. Not recommended for you to move forward to approve. You could certainly put them back. That's your prerogative. But as we've had these discussions, yep. this is administration's recommendation to you um, for the school positions. Well, without them, what's the plan? There's, your well, justification is to keep class sizes down, special ed. They may not be receiving all their necessary supports. Some What's of these justifications the are coming from the departments that request it, and through our analysis, the, some of the schools are able to shift within grades because of the enrollments, okay. and so on and so forth. So you know, we're, we're we confident did. class we sizes will not be significantly affected by I think we can handle that. Okay. On page two, um, the again, same thing I mentioned, Centerville uh, has the Title II teaching class size reduction teaching position. So Southernsville has one also. So we're asking for that one to be incorporated into the budget. 1.0 there. Uh, down at the bottom of page two, uh, the gateway to technology teacher. 
um, in an effort to make equity amongst all the middle schools. Uh, they currently have a half-time teacher that's um, shared with Mattapique Middle School. So this is a half-time teacher uh, request to meet state standards, half-time at Centerville Middle School, and you'll see the other half will come in at Mattapique Middle School, so Mattapique and Centerville will both have a .5 GTT teacher. In fact, it's the top of page three in Centerville. Wait, okay, and, uh, it's a little too fast, sir. Um, okay. Centerville, the middle, Centerville Middle, right below that, you cross it off because the, we had a temporary retired teacher. Through, was, through the scheduling model, we feel that we can absorb the need for this, and we believe that the retired teacher will continue to fulfill that role. Correct. Oh, okay. So we're not going to reduce that one? Is that what you said? So it is reduced. reduced. They did reduced. request one, and now we've reduced it. That's why it's stricken through with it as a zero. And I, you know, and I think we asked staff to look at ways they can rearrange things to absorb some of these additional calls. So, I mean, this is what you're coming back at that's, saying, that's right. you know, we, you know, okay, how can we internally prioritize and still get our same bang for our buck, but yes. something moving around. We'll I, mean, I think we've asked that a couple times. Yes. Reach out to some of the principals said, if this does not go forward, how will you adjust? And they have plans. There's plans okay. to do that. Okay. Right. Yep. Um, top of page three is, again, the half of a position for Mattapique Middle. A special ed teacher for Stevensville Middle School related to class size, I mean, I'm sorry, case, uh, case sizes there is a request to go forward. And then uh, down at the bottom of page four, uh, Southersville was, we're, we're piecemealing that together to get the requirements in, but to, again, to make them equitable, they require a 1.0 position at that school because there's currently not an FTE at that school. Uh, this would make all the middle schools have the one gateway to technology position. And that is it. So the total for school-based positions going forward is 6.48 positions at a cost of $418,560 as shown on page five. There were no increases to materials of instruction. There were a few, we talked about them before. We're not recommending any of them going forward. Some of them we can absorb within existing resources. Uh, and and um, some of it is in the capital budget from a technology standpoint. So we've taken out the virtual academy? No. No. The virtual academy is The online. Arise Academy Online Learning Facilitator. That's how I stopped because that's, that is being replaced by the virtual. These kids can use virtual academy. Sure, and they can use uh, Ms. Susan Grace, who's the facilitator okay. uh, of online learning. Okay. They can work with Susan Grace. Yeah, he's an Correct. online facilitator. Again, he's not getting his nurse and secretary. One more year. So, any questions on that particular document? The next one on the handout. Three. Or I should have another this one. I have my own copy here. Thank you, sir. So, as some of the board members are familiar from the last year's budget process, where we put, and I use the term, this one pager. Uh, at this point, this one pager is now on legal size because of some of the requests that have been um, we're recommending going forward and asking for your decisions as to um, at, if these would be part of the superintendent's presentation on the March uh, March fourth. <coughs> but to kind of like, go over the lay of the land, um, this is the 21 superintendent's proposed budget as it is now, with the exception of whatever changes we may make. It starts off with the approved budget where we are, both restricted and unrestricted, not only the dollars, but in the FTE. So you can see our FY20 approved budget is $103,346,549. From the revenue standpoint, I've broken that out as best that we know it now through our state funding formulas that we've received from MSDE, anything that I might know about Kerwin. Um, so right now, this is our best estimate. So going down the revenue side, there's no change to federal revenue at this point. Um, federal revenue really only supports the restricted funds. So if there was an increase in federal revenue here, we would see an increase in the expenditures on the grant side, which is what we're not talking about tonight. So there's really, a, that, that's why that's zero. There's really no federal impact to our unrestricted operating budget. On the state side, our regular formula grants will increase by $790,750. There is two... Uh, MOE, loop. MOE, that's what you're saying. What is that? Is so it? this is what the state, through the formulas, 
are going to tell us based on our enrollment we're going to get seven hundred and ninety thousand dollars county and moe is below that so they broke the this year the state because of the blueprint moving forward they broke two pieces of the blueprint funding out from the regular state aid funding one of them was pre-k because that's going to be funded separately going forward. And the other one was the declining enrollment grant. And if you're familiar, we have had some declining enrollment between last year and this year. Netting those two out by themselves, we get, we're gaining $14,116. So between both state formula, um, formulas, I'm sorry, that we're going to just get just a slightly over $800,000 from state funding. We have talked about in the past, even in my Kerwin update, about some college and career or CTE or teacher MOI money. We probably won't see any indication of a dollar amount there until after session closes. When that happens, it will probably be restricted funds. So we would increase the revenue here. And down here in the lower part, we would increase the expenditure to offset it. Because like I said, it's going to be restricted, as a lot of the Kerwin funding was. So, um, say it again, the state funded for the uh, less enrollment is what, how much is that? I don't so see. between the two, between pre-K and the, and the little bit of the declining enrollment grant that we're getting, we're netting out $14,116. Okay, that's what that is. Okay. It's the netting of the two. And as we mentioned, or I think I mentioned at, during my um, presentation with the um, Kerwin, we lost full-time pre-K students, which is what we got funded on, and we gained half-day pre-k students which we do not get funded on so our pre-k enrollment in total went up but our funding went down because our full day enrollment went down right. and the netting of that is the 14,000 so the um, the blueprint as I mentioned the other piece of the blueprint that is kind of set aside for the governor that he has to release which could be about a half million dollars to us which is CCR CTE and teacher MOI um, has not been released I won't see it until after session closes those will come with strings so again like i mentioned just a few seconds ago we'll add a number here once it's approved and then we'll just add the corresponding expenditures down below the current county uh, maintenance of effort which includes the education effort component is 1.5 million dollars and to make this balance now with everything down below we would be asking the county above maintenance of effort for 3.5 million dollars where their total commitment would be five million ninety thousand eight hundred twenty three dollars fund balance is shown as a negative two hundred thirty four thousand what that's the assumption we have two hundred thirty four in this budget the current 20 budget as we presented to you last year we present that we would not use fund balance to fund ongoing expenditures so if I have a revenue source this year and I don't have a revenue source next year then that's why that's a negative 234 it's not zero it's a loss of two hundred thirty four thousand dollars of revenue but last year this board used two hundred thirty four thousand dollars of fund balance correct this year you're pulling it out and we're not using any fund balance and and and, and right now in our scenario yes sir that's, that's so, I mean, so again that's a reduction of two hundred thirty four thousand in revenue so where who picks that up the county picks that up well, they should, but I don't, I mean, I think it would, I mean, to, I to make it I'm not going to criticize it, but I have a, a real problem when somebody uses fund balances to fund a reoccurring cost. I agree. And I think that was a, not a very appropriate thing to do, but that's just my opinion. It's the, it is all of our opinion. Well, was where, well where can we, we go from there? You just don't spend it if you don't have it. With that said, um, I proposed 2020 operating budget as we sit right now without making any other adjustments will be 1,053 um, employees for a total budget of $109,008,238. That is a 5.48% increase over current funding. Any questions about the revenue piece? I want to make sure I understand the, the, the one way to the right highlighted total county commitment is five million yes that is the that's what we're going to ask that's 1.5 plus 3.5 together the two numbers on the, the left there okay I got it. Uh, and the 1.5 in, includes the education effort yes ma'am okay we haven't pulled those separate okay no because it it's it's the same it's a calculation yes. but it's the same they have to give us the 1.5 million dollars state says so okay so they have to give that bottom line is we county for roughly I'm five million dollars of new money 
no, sir. not new money. Yes, we're above. We're asking them 3.5 new money. No, well, they're, they're new, new money's mandated and what we're asking for. They, they're, they're by law need to give us 1.5. We're asking right. the county to write us a check for $5.1 million more, more than, than they did last year. Right. Wait. Of which 1.5 okay, I'm have missing to the one then. I'm missing the above. One the 1.5 1. 5 is required. It's yes. MOE and, and. But they, the county has to give that to us. Correct. But that's above what they gave us last year. Correct. Yeah, because that's yes. MOE. Right. Okay. Right. All right. I, I thought you meant above. More, I mean, something no, they don't have. To they at, at this scenario, they would have to write us a check for five point one million dollars more than they did last year. Yeah. All right. Okay. Which historically has not happened. Oh. Just want to just want to put that out there. So moving forward to where the expenditures are are coming from, and I just visually, I just want you to just kind of step back and not look at the details, but visually, the things that are marked in green will mimic your green detail sheets that we've been playing with for the last couple of years. The blue matches the blue. The two things that are not on either one of those, and we'll address both of those first, um, are two big ticket items. So the one, as we've talked about, the compensation placeholder for negotiated agreements, that's the, about $2.5 million. That's in the red. And then um, after talking with county commissioners yesterday, um, we added a workforce coordinator to the staffing under community partnerships engagement, the other pink slot, 1.0 FTE for just a placeholder amount of $100,000. And we, those are the two things that are not reflected on any of the other prior documents that we've talked about. What, what about the nurse? So the nurse is in here because it's been on these blue and green sheets for the last workshop that we had. So to we explain what the workforce what the coordinator is. Yeah, what is that? They are asking for, we, it was taken out of the budget back in 2011. We had a, a person who was in charge of the students going out into the workforce, um, coordinating mm -hmm. jobs, mm -hmm. working with the families, working with the students, keeping track for, with credited hours. It, 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 we used to have one, and I, I remember years ago. Um, they would like to have one back in order to work with um, Chamber of Commerce, work with the CTE program, um, work, you know, so get some more, um, like uh, Rob Marsh is doing, youth, youth apprenticeship, youth apprenticeship program. program. I'm, they're asking for that. They think it's it's critical right now with what we're trying to do moving forward with the CTE program. To encourage growth. Yeah. To encourage growth, to encourage, you know, growth in business, also getting our students into the workforce. Um, it, it's a great thing. I mean, we used to have it. So this and is separate from what we have to fund the MOE. This is a completely new it's thing. In that no, this is part of our budget. So we have to include 100000 for that. It's, it's, in, it's, in it's in these numbers in front of you. And just, just for, again, edification purposes, we had this position in this initial request before this board. That was the social studies facilitator that was we were going to move over to so Mr. Tolley could do some Absolutely. of this work. And of course, then through discussions, we did not bring that forward to you a second or third time. Now it's back from the request from this the county. This came from a conversation with the county commissioners yesterday. And it, I mean, in my, in my very limited thing of background, at MOE at 1.5, I think they're very easily willing to add another 100 for that position because that's something they're just as adamant about as we are, funding, which would be an additional. But we were also talking about this. We weren't adamant about that. No, 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 they are. They are out of it. I thought you said we were out of it. No, no, no. Well, I think, I think having no, some people are. to help uh, Mr. Tolley is a good thing. Oh, I am no, helping the students with the work-based learning, absolutely. Mm -hmm. But again, you had brought this up yesterday. The salary is going to be roughly seventy with, with thousand, and then with benefits, it could easily be to one hundred thousand, but not to exceed this. Is that what a, I understand? Well, and this is a central office position, correct? I yes. mean, I wasn't in the more, meeting. That was another thing. It's going to be a central office committee. And this, and this is not going to be social studies. No, this is okay. work based well, on until we get the job description written and, and where it will be appropriately has, placed. I can't guarantee that we can't hire or, or somebody over a hundred thousand dollars. We just have to see where the position is, who the viable candidate is, and, and all of that. For budgeting purposes, a place we're, we're, we're used seventy-two thousand for teachers, and we're using a hundred for this position because it's a twelve-month position. The teachers only ten months. Ten months. So I mean, that's where we're using an estimate, and then we find out where the what I'm thinking this is along the lines of a supervisor. Mm -hmm. And that, or you know, Similar. specialist or something along those lines. Again, this was just yesterday, you know. Yep. So we we threw it okay. in for your discussion. Okay. Now, since we've been through some of the some of this 
we just revised the green and the blue. Do we want to go through each one of these columns? I certainly can do that. Or are we willing to make decisions tonight on things that we want to go forward? I know we do have one budget session uh, next Wednesday. Um, I'd be happy to go through this, this, but these are basically little synopses of what we have seen over the last couple of weeks through the blue and the green uh, worksheets. But I can certainly go down each column if you'd like. I mean, we can do it. We've been over it. I think some comments were, I made a couple of comments that some of the places looked like they were on thin ice. You know, we, you know, we're looking at, at this request, $5 million new money, which, uh, I don't know if I'm optimistic about that, but we have to make some decisions at that time. Um, the, the, our superintendent's not here, so I'm real reluctant to pull anything out unless we talk to her and say that I won't be here next meeting. So That's yeah. okay. But I Let mean, me just look at the blues again. What, certainly. What, what uh, we put down, we call them these positions mandatory. So, so let's let's go down the learning accountability and results column, the very first column. Again, this right. is everything basically that touches the child or the, or the classroom. So we have the two title, two teachers that we talked about just a few minutes ago. Mm -hmm. The science consumables. There's no FTEs there, and thirty-six thousand dollars. The English language arts high school consumables. So some of these things are what we've been absorbing, overspending in the last couple of years that really need to be in the budget. Some of this, Mr. Paluski alluded to, that we were gone three years ago or five years ago and signed a contract for a software license, and now it's up to, we signed it five years ago, now it's time to renew that. And it's a core and, and many of these. things I would call mandatory. I just want to well, title and, and, mandatory. And, and also, Mr. Fister, that we had the Striving Readers Grant over yes. the last four years about um, almost five, uh, uh, about $500,000. Over $500,000. Yeah. So. Some of these items, because that grant is going to uh, going away, we now have to be able to pick up that cost. Agreed. I think I would consider those uh, mandatory, but the title mandatory is to make sure we go through, make sure we're clear that each one of those is mandatory. Yeah, they are. So, sure. That's my, my. I just want to clarify. Well, when, if you go through the budget and you can see the historical spending, you can see that some of it's been underfunded. Down, I mean, in years past. So, so our terminology for mandatory, it's either legal or it's something that state we've been doing, state requirement, it's testing. part of our core, it's a tested area or something like that. So science consumables, if we don't fund this, then, you know, we don't have a science uh, program. Same with English language arts and the high school. If we don't fund the $61,000 because we funded it um, three, four, five years ago, we would have to pull that resource out of the high schools. Read 180, as Mr. Paluski alluded, that's been put in place via the grant. Now it's time for the operating budget to pick those pieces up. Same with the English Language Arts Middle School license for $40,000 and the Elementary School Wonders Program uh, for $40,000. So those are things we are currently and, and doing. I, and I would say, add to that, Mr. Fister, just to run, continue to maintain our core program, these resources would be required. And our use of the mandatory. I see there's no really staffing in here. No. Except that. The health coordinator down at okay. the bottom. As those columns uh, are split, the left is staffing and the right is uh, the dollars. So the 504 plan software, we talked about that. That's a, um, a $5,250 cost, and the other $20,000 is all of the other curriculum software licenses, as we've talked about, that are keeping pace with the 2%, 3%, 4%, 5% annual increase that have not been funded in the last few years. Special Ed Midshore Educational Consortium, we've talked about that. There's an increase of $130,000. Non-public placements, we've talked about that. There's an increase of $255,000. Both of those are mandatory because we're currently doing them now. We don't have the budget to fund them. Comar uh, required training for special ed. Mr. Pluskin can allude to that. It was for some of the paras and the it's tech. It's in the, our TAC 2 training. So, if, you know, to be able to do restraints, you know, those folks have to be trained to be able to do that. So, it's a requirement by Comar. And Mr. Smith, here's your coordinator of health services mm -hmm. as the last item there. Going down to the next, if we want to use the term priority or how we say it, so the mandatory things we have to do, the cost of doing business is just those things as enrollment grows or uh, we, we need to enhance certain things moving forward. That's what this group is. So the school-based staffing that we just talked about, 3.48 positions for 250,000. The paraprofessional for 24,000. 
the curriculum writing and the dollar amount increase for stipend writing because we cannot find teachers that are willing to come in and write curriculum for the current stipend amount. Uh, there's an increase of $48,500 there, so to continue what we're doing is the request uh, to supplement those funds. The teacher, teacher leadership development for the mentors, there's a, a cost of 30703 there. We have a lot of uh, curriculum and instruction equipment that is not because of budget constraints has not been repaired. We have microscopes, for an example, that are sitting in closets, not being repaired and not being used. There's a $6,000 request to increase that, or to actually not increase it, but to fund it. And then uh, substitutes and stipends, again, going back to the, uh, as we talked about, the new teachers, the being able to have a substitute in their class while they go and observe more experienced teachers. Uh, that's what this $24,200 is for them to do it, I believe, two times a year uh, to pair up with a more experienced teacher. The board certified behavioral analyst, again, going under program continuation. This is one of those things that we have funded contractually at the cost of some other items. Um, this is a request to move forward. It is something we're currently doing. If this is not funded, then this person would not, uh, and even though it's contracted, it's not an FTE, uh, these services would not be available to our, our students. Is this in, because we can't hire psychologists? Or is that this, what is this? Um, it's, a, it's, a, it's a behavioral analyst. I don't want to speak for Ms. Smith, but it's beyond what a psychologist and social. It is. So we have students that might have severe behavior. Um, this individual goes out and actually supports the school uh, might do an observation on that student to be able to support the school with documentation. Okay. Um, All the schools that move uh, yeah. Okay. Yes. Uh, thank you. Countywide. Um, moving down to the virtual lab, uh, virtual learning academy licensing, that's $158,000 request as, as we talked about. MSD pushed us off a year to be able to get the funding for the students in this, to be able to fund this program since they pushed it out a year. Now, we won't have the revenue in next year to continue the Virtual Learning Academy, so this $158,000 is the licensing for the Virtual Learning Academy. We won't have, okay, we don't have students in it yet. Yes, we, we do. Yes, ma'am. To the tune of $158,000? I thought, I thought we were barely starting the program. Just in licenses. Right, just to be able to run the, the licensing platform program. So we're getting ready to do an RFP right now out to a variety of vendors. But we do have a vendor right now, which is K-12. When we started the program, um, MSDE, before they would approve that program, we had to you know, provide a, a lot of documentation. At the time to be able to count that, that September 30th count, we couldn't say that those students were actually enrolled with us at that time. They were enrolled in the middle of October. Therefore, we couldn't count them right. in, although they were, we were working with them, we couldn't say that you were actually enrolled in courses with us. Therefore, this enrollment that we're in now, they'll be able to count towards FY22. Yes. They'll be yes. on our upcoming September 30th. Correct. They'll be on our yes. enrollment. Which Correct. is the m funding we would get from the state in FY22. They had to be in this past September 30th, 19 enrollment to be able to fund us for 21. So we barely, so basically they're going to be in class with this. I mean, they're doing this when school starts. In this coming September? This coming September. Yes. yes. They're, they're, they're doing it now. Well, they're doing it now, yes. But I mean, as far as Count. they're counting towards the total enrollment yeah. towards MOE, they'll count in for... And that was the whole premise. We would increase our enrollment, and right. the increase enrollment would pay for we, the cost correct. of the program. Since MSD did the not offset. approve that, yeah. we're off by a year. The offset. So, so they have finally approved it? So, I mean, like, what, how many kids do we have in the program? We're currently 18. We started out uh, with an estimated pilot of 25. And we started when? October. Well, when it was officially by MSD. By, MSD. by the time we got the platform and everything up and running, it was the middle of October. Okay, so we didn't have to pay for a license then this year. Yes, they're, they're currently in the K-12 vendor, right. which is a licensed program. So we're picking that up right now. So what they're using right now is an online virtual platform. Right, I'm just saying we, this is licensed is for all of next year. For 30... 
30? I think we've said 30. 30. We'd increased it to okay. potentially even for next year. Did, did we pay for this year the license? We yes, didn't we have were, it budgeted, did we? Or we did not have we it budgeted. We only had the position. We, but we only had the position. So there was a little bit of savings in the position dollars we're going to be able to use. And then we'll be, as we go through the end of the year, repurpose dollars in the existing budget to try to cover the small amount of license costs this year. Correct. But with it going to 30, that's what okay. the, the cost okay. is coming up from here. So we have the 108 thousand on the position I think well not here but it's that in was our in budget our now. Budget, so which stays in your base this budget. adds on top yeah this is just strictly licensed this is no people here we still the cost of the program huh? who is coordinating it that's uh, Susan Grace Dubois she's okay. the facilitator of the virtual learning Academy so okay. she's been on board with us since July Okay. And because of her certification, she's actually helped us save dollars uh, because we haven't Especially. had to hire that teacher that we thought that we needed in special education. She's, she's, got over three. she's certified in about six 15. different areas. God bless so her. So this program Especially is about $275,000. Yes, sir. And then the last thing that's on the line for learning accountability and results is $10,000 for primary talent development. Um, for, for the elementary grades. This is our gifted and talented program. Moving over, safety and security, there's no operating budget request. We're trying to handle some of those through the capital budget request. Under operational effectiveness, and again, these are our pillars for our strategic plan and our focus areas. Um, transportation, the bus contract, the increase, that's why it's under mandatory because there is, we have a three year contract. Next year would be year two of the three years and requires an increase of $163,350 to fund those contracts. And then down below under cost of doing business, um, as we talked about and how I presented it in the other documents, there's a, t there's a bunch of transportation, operation of plant, maintenance and technology increases where we repurposed dollars where we knew we didn't need those funds and areas that we have historically been underspent. We've moved those funds around all total, it's probably 10 or 12 little areas, refuse removal to meetings and conferences to stipends. So we summarize those as we did in the other forms and that's what I've reflected here. So with all of the transportational operational increases from drug testing and fingerprinting and all of that, there's an increase just to keep pace, $91,000. For driver overtime related to our special ed increase in special ed and homeless transportation, uh, $40,000 increase there. Again, this is to get us back on somewhat level ground with the over expenditures that we'll probably experience this year and we experienced last year. One additional bus driver again for our special ed uh, routes because of the in county special ed transportation is requiring uh, or making this a necessity based on the number of routes we have to pro uh, provide. And again, going back to my opening remark there, the operational increases within operation of plant and maintenance of plant are 61 and $68,000 respectfully, uh, and technology $10,600, and that's basically to keep pace with the, the software licenses, and, and like I said, we've mentioned this many times before. Under the uh, operational effectiveness for additional consideration, the accountant request is still there. The athletic director reorganization, no FTEs, but a $42,000 cost for that program. The Ken Island High School Activity Bus, $27,000, and then a request to add a carpenter slash locksmith in the uh, maintenance department for $53,398. So in that column, three positions for total cost with other non-position costs of $685,000. Moving over to human capital, we already addressed the compensation uh, placeholder. Teacher retirement, estimating right now going up about $60,000. We had a huge uh, increase in our life insurance projection premium of $47,000 next year. Again, small county, bad experience with life insurance, your rates go up. And that's what's reflected here, but this is a true $47,000 mandatory increase to our life insurance costs for next year. Health insurance, right now we're estimating about a 6.5% increase, and that would require the board's share to go up by $662,000. And then the temporary help slash minimum wage requirement um, increase another hundred thousand um, dollars for that request. And some of these numbers could be modified. We get a little bit further in the budget. They're not going to vary by tens of thousands of dollars, but maybe thousands of dollars as we get a little bit further with the new rate, especially on this one. That I can do an analysis to get some historical uh, trend. Are we are we seeing an increase in substitute usage because 
substitute rates are going up, I need to project that out to see whether the 100 will be sufficient. I believe it will at this point. Student services, the materials for that office is a small little increase of $500 there, bringing that column to 3.3, almost $3.4 million. And then under community partnerships and engagement, as we discussed, the uh, workforce coordinator, one position for $100,000. So all in total, above the line, $5.6 million in revenue we're asking for to meet the $5.6 million in expenditures down below. That I can answer certainly some questions. We can certainly make some decisions to move forward. Um, There's a question. Mm -hmm. Just a kind of tickle me with the information. What if we didn't take the Kerwin money? What if we didn't take the Kerwin money? We'd probably be one of the only counties in the state that wouldn't, and like if we didn't take the $554,000 last year for salaries, we would have been the only county that would not have ponied up the state match. Uh, when it comes to salaries, I would think we would fall behind. Um, but if we didn't? I don't, I mean, what, some what, of it I'm not sure there's an option, honestly, because they're going to change our funding formulas. Now, there's reporting performance and whatever requirements, and if we don't meet those, they could withhold the funding, but. I'm just saying if we didn't take it, what positions will be lost? Well, right now, the only Kerwin dollars here okay. is there's really not any Kerwin related okay. dollars other okay. than the $550,000 plus the special ed positions and all those things that we got last year, which rolled over into this year. Okay. So off the top of my head, we'd, we'd be reducing teacher compensation by one and a half percent. We'd be losing probably six or eight positions special ed okay. being those. Um, we would not have the um, screener. The universal screener. The universal required. screener. We would not have the mental health coordinator. All of those were funded with, with Kerwin dollars last year, continuing into this year. Okay. I mean, just Kerwin, a, it was just, but, a, it's just a question, because now that we've seen that Kerwin has evolved into this thing, this huge thing, and a lot of places, you know, we're now hearing that a lot of uh, counties are, or superintendents are even going to be testifying against it because it's just, it's grown up beyond itself. Um, if, if, if it didn't come to pass, what would it hurt in our budget if Currently we didn't get nothing. money? Other than the, we would have to give up what we gave last year. But if, if, let's just say this legislation got punted to the following year, none of this House Bill 1300 funding is affecting the budget before you okay. tonight. Okay. That, that, yeah, that answer? Yes, that's what I okay. want to know because if we weren't, also if we're not taking the Kerwin money, then we wouldn't have to worry about matching, you know, we wouldn't have to worry about, you well, know. We've already met that requirement. Yeah, so. I know we have, but we wouldn't have to worry about it, nor would we have to worry about all of the extra, uh, you know, have the book work that they're asking you for. So I'm just wondering. We got the, we got the money, so, and is it, it's guaranteed for next year? Or we still have to meet the requirement of one and so we so it's for two years so we've already met the requirements that we will get that funding for right. next year the next year after if that we, if after we that then that's when this that 172 book. page bill takes effect supposedly and then everything's going to be put into the mixing bowl and what comes it's out right. is what comes okay. out it'll we're be a form funding formula will come out right? mainly it's going to be changes to funding formula a lot of review teams a lot of accountability um, and a lot of mandated this is how you have to spend your money is coming forth and this is how your hiring practices are going to be, and this is the standards of the teachers, and there's a lot, whole lot more to it. So it's just it. not giving us a bunch of money, figuring out where they're going to get it from. There's a lot of, um, lack of to not try to be political, a lot of red tape associated with this. It's a huge course. carrot. Yeah. Being dangled. And the, and we've compensated our teachers, what, two years in a row, 3%? So they, depending on where they are, the, the, the average the step, yeah, step and one and a half, one percent last year, step in one and a half percent for the next year, plus the Kerwin match. So just the COLA itself was two and a half, two and a half, I'm sorry, 2.25 and 2.75. Just the COLA itself. And, and the, the steps, steps are anywhere between two and five percent. So we're talking four or five percent increases. It, on average, yes. With the Kerwin. With the Kerwin dollars. With the Kerwin dollars, but you know, our biggest nut on here is uh, over three and a half million dollars. And it's, it's, it's more people oriented, but human capital for this increases. You know, when you start talking, giving four and five percent raises that are compounding every year. There's your key word, compounding. Yes, That's sir. Exactly and it. so, you know, when we're looking at asking the commissioners for five million dollars, 
you know, we're getting ourselves into the, uh, uh, and I mean, it's it's what's in the contract. I understand that, and I'm, I'm for honoring contracts, but this can't keep on. Uh, I mean, it's not sustainable. Correct. And, and you know, and then I hear this current of, you know, they're, you're giving you a dollar, making you spend ten. It's not going to work. It's a house of cards. I mean, you know, I just I just find. You know, we, people need. To, everybody needs to pay attention because it's not going to be. It's not going to be obtainable. It's. Sustainable. I mean, and they have not sixty. Sustainable days. at all. Sustainable, uh, right? And then depending again, where is the funding coming from? What's the scenario? What is the county going to be required to chip in? The county, I meaning county government. You know what our reporting requirements are going to be. Yeah, and all this has to be decided in sixty days. Well, yeah, but I mean, I even question if this year sustainable when I look at it. You know, with what we. Get, we've uh, committed to with the, uh, compensation at three and a half to three point six million, you know, and, and maintenance efforts just one point five. That's not even you're not even touching half of it with nothing else being done. And and the other thing to sure. to note, as you can see, the state revenue increase was just over eight hundred thousand dollars. Seven hundred and fifty thousand of that eight hundred thousand dollars was given to us through a hold harmless provision because of the way the formulas have evolved and where our enrollment are and some other factors in there. Um, there's this hold harmless provision, and they've held us harmless for $750,000 of an increase in revenue. That's not a guarantee. So yeah, as our enrollment increases, decreases, little by little, you know, over the years, up some, down some, that's, if you look at it long term, that's level funding from the state until we see what Kerwin's going to do and where those dollars are going to be. Right, and, and it doesn't, I mean, I just have not very optimist on this because it's almost like they're giving you something, getting you hooked on it, and then you're going to pay more and more. the same thing with Thornton. Thornton, that was exactly, oh, the, we know. had Thornton for what, 10 years? Yeah. 16 90, years. We've had, we've had MISPAP, we've had Thornton, we've had all kinds of stuff, well, this I, damn stuff. That, you know, when Thornton ran out, everybody was kind of up in arms, and then here comes Kerwin, but the Kerwin's got a heck of a lot more strings to it. And, and the reason that, from everything that I've been uh, reading and, and uh, watching, is this is picks up where Thornton left off because there was a lot of accountability that Thornton did not put in the place Correct. that they're trying to, I think, overcompensate for here. I think that's right. And overcompensation is a key word as well. Yes, ma'am. But I, I, didn't, I just wanted to know what, who we were going to lose and yeah. if we and under this scenario, um, no one will be impacted if Kerwin does not get the blueprint. I'm going to stay away from Kerwin because it's really called the blueprint. So Kerwin was the commission. But the, the funding mechanisms are called the blueprint for Maryland's future. So, yes, if we don't go for the blueprint or the blueprint gets kicked to the next year or it's watered down substantially for this year, that's not reflected in this. Because this is your 21, of most society. of it's going to be 22. You really is. Because as the minimum wage goes up, if a minimum wage gets to $15, how much are you willing to spend on a cheeseburger at a restaurant? It's, it's, it all, it's all the same thing. We're, we're giving everybody more salary, but our goods and services are going to cost more and more because, right. you know, everybody is, is so we're, we're, we're human doing, capital. We're doing salaries, we're doing benefits, you know, we're, we're at a seven-day work day. I mean, I'm not, you know, it's just to wear our culture. I mean, we, there's got to be some stop because this is not sustainable. It, to yeah. me, it's not, and when you talk about Kerwin money, when we're talking about, I'm thinking three, and you're telling me four and five percent, it ain't going to happen. And it's not like it's just a bonus. It's reoccurring. I mean, so you know, you spend this year, year, and then all of a sudden you think, oh, I've got that. I need more now. Well, I mean, and the theory with Kerwin, and I don't have the specific number, but in a few years, 2025 20, or something, you know, the minimum salary for teachers is sixty sixty thousand dollars, sixty one thousand dollars is the goal to get to get beginning teacher salaries there. Is that with benefits? No, it's just a base salary. Okay. So. Well, I think. The point is, we for years needed to improve the 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 whole t teacher salary, the teacher. But we needed to improve this so we can we can get the right people to come in, get get better, potentially better by treating them better. All my life, I said teachers are paid too little and police officers are paid too little. Since I was a little kid, I used to think that. And the teachers are influence our kids. They've got our kids more than parents got to have our kids. So, I mean, you, you, we have to remember as a school board to look at what this is all about, and it's all about doing things better. Now, it's, 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 a, it's something we're going to have to, to get our arms around as far as funding it. But we as a school board have to remember what it's all about. Also, I think that's important. I just, when our kids graduate, I hope they can afford to live in the state of Maryland. Well, I hope any of us will be able to live in the state of Maryland. 
All right. Any other questions uh, on this? So do we want to make any decisions tonight, or I highly recommend that we just all digest this, and then next week when the superintendent is here, we make some recommendations there. Maybe something else. I mean, we had two things pop up just from yesterday's conversation, so I'm sure the next week something else will. And if will something come does through. come, you know, I, you know, I think, you know, from this point, I think it worked well last year, Captain Kelly. I think, you know, we worked from this yes. document going forward. You know, certainly we would have this as a resource. Do we use this going? forward and uh, whatever information I can provide you beyond so, this please let me know. So just to, to, to quite just to give everybody the same schedule of events so the March 4th the superintendent will bring forth the proposed superintendent budget it goes forward before the county commissioners you all will presenting it what the end of March to them and the March I think, yeah, I think it's when you guys go over okay for work there's always those three dates in April that they have the town hall meetings to you know, ask for requests from the community and is it the May? Remind me. Is it the May meeting that this, the county commissioners vote on it? Yes. Okay. Comes back to us, and then we have May and June to knock this around, beat it to death, get you know whatever money they give us is Make what we work. have. Yeah. Make it work with what's here, right. and we have to have it ratified by July 1st for the next school year. Right. Um, so that's just the time frame of, of our responsibilities and what the county normally does. Is there anything else anybody wants want us to add to this? Or are we pretty good? We have a pretty good hold on what's going to happen or not happen. And just to clarify, all wishes have been put in. This is it. No more requests are going to be added. Well, the only thing that was added was the county commissioner yes. comment. But okay. yes, from the schools and departments, this is it. They've they've had numerous opportunities. Mm -hmm. um, we've reached out to we've, them again. Um, we've gone through it numerous yeah, times. We've gone through it. Yeah. Okay. Just it's an enormous sort of any new mandate that might come out of the legislative session. Well, that's true too, because yeah. that could happen the next few weeks. It certainly could. Because they have until April first. What is the, what is the session's end? Got about fifty like April, four more days. April. Tax day. Tax day. Out. Fifteen. General. It's April fifteenth. Oh, well, it's, it's an enormous amount of work. I know, John. And something could come you. out of that. Oh. Yeah. Very good. It really could be a lot of work. I know. So on our agenda, future meetings and events, uh, like we stated next Wednesday, February 19th, we are going to continue with our school board work meeting. The superintendent will be here. We'll finalize any last minute things. March 4th, Wednesday, March 4th is our regular school board meeting. We will be having two subsequent meetings in March, but budget meetings, the 12th and the 19th. Am I correct? Is this right? Yes, I wonder if we're going to need that. I mean, we well, we have this as placeholders. We have those as placeholders just in case. Yeah, amazing. If we don't need the 12th, that's fine, but our 19th meeting is mandatory as per our handbook. Okay, uh, anything else? All right, thank you all very, very much for coming. We really appreciate everyone's um, work and effort and um, long hours, so appreciate it. So, do I have a motion to adjourn this meeting? So moved. I have a motion and a second. Second. A motion and second. Any questions or comments on the motion? Hearing none, I call for the vote on the motion to adjourn this meeting. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed say no. The ayes have it. The motion is carried. Thank you very much. We'll see you next week. Thank you.